a man. Peyton Manning stepping out. It's the Zion Show. Pass is caught by Jones. It'll be the undefeated and third-ranked Gators and the one and two Ole Miss Rebels. And hello again, everybody. I am Dave Neal, and welcome to Oxford, Mississippi. You know, the Florida Gators won the national championship a year ago, but not many people gave them a lot of respect to defend that title here in 2007. And that's simply because they lost so many players defensively. They also lost some weapons on offense. But this is a team that has put it together. The young players are stepping up. And you know what? They have gotten themselves right back into the na national title talk. And we'll see if this team can hold on because right now they are running on all cylinders. My partner, Dave Archer, the quarterback. And, Dave, let's start with quarterbacks because Tim Tebow was one of those question marks coming into this season. Could he lead this team every down in every situation? So far, so good. Yeah, is it possible? He's met every expectation. And it's not just been what he's done on the field. We know about the running. We know about throwing the football. But it's what he does off the field, the preparation, the energy he brings to the game. This guy is a charismatic leader, and he is the orchestrator of this offense. And simply put, he's been able to throw all the throws this year, but he's also been able to run the football. He has been very, expect very uh, I guess you could say, effective in terms of finding the end zone. And you look at the numbers for Tim Tebow. Now, speaking of quarterbacks, Ole Miss has been, uh, I guess, you pleasantly surprised by their starting quarterback in Seth Adams, a guy who beat out Brent Schaefer for the job this year, but he's been banged up with a shoulder. How good is this guy? Well, Seth Adams is a little nicked up, but he's a guy that Coach Orgeron likes a lot because of what he does with the football. He doesn't make mistakes. No turnovers for this Ole Miss offense over the last two weeks. But make no mistake, the heartbeat of this football team is Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. He is a beast running the football. Just two weeks ago, ran for over 225 yards, 33 carries. The Gators will get an opportunity to stop Ben Jarvis Green Ellis today. He's one of my favorite players in the league. He'll need to have an outstanding day today here at Vaught Hemingway Stadium. Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis and company, which leads us to our Toyota keys to the game. So the keys to the game, Dave, for the Gators, just keep doing what you're doing. Stay the same. Keep do making the plays that you're making, and your things will work out fine for you. For Mississippi, you've got to make the game a long, a short game. Move the chains. Take care of the football. Make it a game where you have the football. Tim Tebow does not. This Florida offense prolific and will open the game with the football. Ole Miss will kick it off in the 22nd all-time meeting between these two clubs. Actually, the Rebels lead this series 11-9-1. The last time that Florida came here to Oxford in, 19, in, in 2002, they actually lost that football game. And in 03, Ole Miss went back to Gainesville and won that one. Kickoff down to about the 13-yard line to James, who's out over the 30. He's got plenty of room. This has been a sore spot for the Rebels. And they open up today's game with poor kickoff coverage again. And Florida will set up shop at the 32-yard line. That's a short kick to start off with, Dave. And Brandon James coming off a big return last week against Tennessee. Really never touched until he finally gets up to the kicker. Let's go for let's go down to Dave Baker for more on the kick. Hey Dave, you know Florida has done so much this year, but Urban Meyer not sure what to expect from this young team with this being their first road game. Earlier this week he had a freshman come up to him and say, hey coach, this is a travel thing. Do we go get day of the game? So he got the team up early at 6.30 this morning. He said he made sure they all had toothbrushes, but he's very anxious to see how they'll handle this first road test. Well, they're off to a good start here, Buzz. A little inside handoff gets about a yard or two to get some more. Tim Tebow, the sophomore quarterback out of Jacksonville, Florida, averaging 278 yards a game through the air. He has accumulated 835 this season, but it's his percentages are just off the charts, almost 74% in terms of completing his passes. 342 yards of total offense a game. A one-man show at times. Debo up the middle, breaks a tackle down to the 25. That will set up a third down and about five, maybe four and a half. Here's a look at that offense and a lot of playmakers. Well, all everything Percy Harvin averages 14.3 yards every time he touches the football, whether it's run or pass. He's one of the guys that Tebow will get the football to. And up front, Drew Miller, we talked about how hard Tebow works. Drew Miller is the, is 
the same guy on the offensive line. Tremendous job of work. The one guy we won't see today, Bubba Caldwell, the injured wide receiver for Florida. Yeah, Bubba was out running around uh, before the game, getting some uh, light sprints in. Looks good, but uh, obviously uh, they don't want to do anything to put him in jeopardy. And on third down, Percy Harvin drops the football. It was enough for the first down. Take a look at this Ole Miss defense quickly as they put up a good stand. Greg Hardy has been the playmaker. He really has. Leads the SEC in sacks and tax for tackles for loss for Ole Miss here. He really does a nice job. Ashley Palmer, he is the J.C. transfer linebacker that's all over the field, and Jamarcus Sanford leads the SEC in tackles. He is really a linebacker playing safety. Here's Joey Ehas from 42 yards out. Joey, two out of two on the year. A low line drive kick that is no good, and Ole Miss stands tall on their opening possession. After a solid return from Brandon James, sets up the football at about the 32-yard line, Florida cannot convert. Dave, you talk about a pickup now for your Ole Miss team to come out. They get uh, Florida gets the short field. Your defense comes on the field, and you get the three and out. Do a nice job against the run. Harvin drops the pass, and then the missed field goal. And all of a sudden, you start feeling a little bit better about yourself as you're a Rebel. Florida has yet to score on their first offensive possession in each of their four games this year. But they have found a way to average about 55 points a game, so I don't think that's really slowed them down too much. Here's a toss sweep to Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. Well, Mike Wallace is the guy on the outside, Dave, that's going to provide them some jump, some spark. He's probably the fastest football player on the team. He'll have a chance to make some plays. And Michael Orr, this is a guy you'll play, see play on Sundays for a long time. He is a big timer at left tackle. Seth Adams uh, has really been impressive, Dave. His percentages are pretty high against Missouri. Had a game over 300 yards. What I like, Dave, is he takes care of the football. He understands what they're trying to do offensively. Ben Jarvis Green Ellis is his guy. This time, Green Ellis tripped up flag on the play at about the 35-yard line. Derek Harvey will get credit for that tackle if it does stand. And that will back Florida up. There's our referee, Matt Austin. Going to get the hold Holding. on the left side of the screen. Offense number 51. Ten yard penalty. Repeat His second tackle, down. Tackle Derek Harvey. That might have been the big call we were talking about. Harvey still makes the play. And at the 24 yard line. There's Dan Warner, the offensive coordinator with the hat on. Second year here at Ole Miss. Came over from Miami when they kind of uh, went through a tumultuous time did the hurricane program. But this offense uh, clicking a lot better than it did a year ago. Adam stands tall in the pocket over the middle. Pass is incomplete. Out at the 43 yard line. Looking for the tight end Robert Lane. That's well, a good read by Seth Adams. Gets a little play action fake, which held the linebackers just a little bit. Allowed Robert Lane. Robert Lane, the tight end, works up. You see the backers held just a little bit by the, by the play action. And that's a catch Robert's got to make for his quarterback. You got to be able to pull these in. You have opportunities to make plays against this Gator defense. You got to make them. Lane has seven catches on the year for 63 yards. Here's a third down and 11. Adams has time. Will now run it, and he'll be well shy of that first down. And this will be a punting situation for Ole Miss. Three man route for Ole Miss this time, Dave. And Florida did a nice job of playing a zone coverage and took away the two throws that Seth Adams wanted. Really had only one option was to tuck it under and see if he could get it himself. And Florida was able to rally up and keep him short. Brandon James will be back to return the Justin Sparks punt. Sparks, the sophomore out of Memphis, Tennessee. James, of course, with a touchdown return on a punt last week against Tennessee and that will stop rolling at the 28 yard line so if nothing else Ole Miss able to flip the field on Florida we've got 11 20 to go in the first quarter.
Mississippi! Gator Bay! Mississippi! Gator Bay! Rebel! Gator Bay! Rebel! The Alltel SEC Game of the Week is being brought to you by Alltel Wireless. By Advance Auto Parts. By Holiday Inn Express. By Regions Bank. By O'Charlie. And by the new AT&T. Ed Ogeron trying to get his defense to play like they did in the first series when they held Florida to a missed field goal. The Gators back at the 28-yard line. Here's Tim Tebow rolling. Hit hard as he throws. Incomplete. Boy, he got popped by Marcus Tillman, the sophomore out of McCall Creek, Mississippi. Little play fake in the backfield to try to freeze the rush. Tillman doesn't buy the play fake at all. And this is what you got to do if you're old Miss, is put Tebow on the ground. And Coach Orgeron loves it. Tillman, 6'4", 260 pounds. Out of the defensive end, they'll also move him a little bit inside to play some defensive tackle to use his quickness on the inside. Out of the shotgun. Here's the handoff to Hardy and the other defensive end to Harvin, excuse me, as he's brought down by Hardy. Greg Hardy, perhaps the best athlete on this team at 6'5", 255. Well, this is a testament to that, Dave. You talk about athleticism. There's nobody tougher to tackle in the open field than Percy Harvin. And Hardy ate him alive on that play. Hardy with 28 stops on the year. Now seven tackles for a loss and three sacks. Third down and 13. It's a keeper, Tebow to the 30, to the 35, but he needed to get to the 38-yard line, tripped up by Dustin, excuse me, Brandon Thomas. What an and outstanding job, Dave, by this Ole Miss defense. Not intimidated whatsoever. Coach Ogeron has them ready to play. John Thompson, this defense ready to go. And, and I mean, the fear factor that the Gator offense puts in most teams when they step on the field, Ole Miss having none of it. Chaz Henry, the true freshman out of Dallas, Georgia, will kick it away to Marche Green. Green calls for a fair catch and is run into lightly, but still run into. And a flag is down. Looked like Chris Rainey might have just bumped him on a fair catch attempt. 45 yard punt by Henry. Let's go downstairs to Dave Baker. You are absolutely correct, uh, Dave Niels. We get the call from Matt Austin. Kick catching interference on the kicking team. 15 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First up. They, they were trying to come up and field the punt. They couldn't get to it. And so field position actually turns out well for the Rebels. Dave Archer, you know, we were talking about those young guys at the top and how they would react to being on the road. Florida had only given up two sacks all year. Both of those were at the hands of Troy. But then here in this one series, they give up two sacks on the series as well. Not handling that blitz package from Ole Miss well at all. No, it looked like they're a little fish-eyed right now. They're going to have to settle into the game. It'll be first down and 10. Ole Miss at the 41 yard line. Little play action. Got the whole defense moving in one direction. Has a man wide open, but the throw is late and behind Marche Green. It hit Tony Joyner. That play was wide open. Dave, you, you called it. It's late. Makes a great play fake. The Florida defense flows. He's got to let it go much sooner than he does. And then uh, Joyner just gets in front of him and essentially screens him with his body. He's got no idea where the ball is. But Seth Adams is late. Dave, you called it exactly. If he comes out of the play fake, sets his feet and shoots it, he's got a chance that's for a That's a touchdown. Play. That's yeah. a, there's nobody back there. And you know how many times you're going to have that opportunity in a game against Florida? Maybe once or twice. Out of the eye formation, second down and 10. Here's the handoff to Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis. He'll pick up five on the play. Brandon Spikes, the middle linebacker, with the stop. 
Take a look at this defensive group for the Gators. Very young, lost nine starters from a year ago, but uh, this group kind of coming together nicely. Yeah, Jermaine Cunningham is that, that counter opposite on the other side of Derek Harvey. Everybody talks about Derek Harvey getting after the passer. And this young linebacker core, Brandon Spikes, all he does is he's around the football all the time. And the secondary, young Joe Hayden, the true freshman playing corners, done an outstanding job of locking one side of the field down. Third down and six. Here comes Joyner on a blitz. Ole Miss picks it up. Pass is caught out at the 34-yard line by Michael Hicks, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. First down, Rebels. As late as we saw on the first pass, Dave, this one comes out on time and is perfect. Outstanding job. Gets the ball to Michael Hicks working on Darian Monroe, but the ball came out on time well before Hicks comes out of the break. And I'll tell you what, the, the the Ole Miss team right now, there's a little bit more blood flowing right now than before the game. They're, they're excited. 18-yard pickup, first down inside the 35-yard line. Here's Green Ellis. He will get a couple on the play. Derek Harvey with the tackle. Well, today's head-to-head -head challenge is brought to you by Altel, the official wireless partner of fans. Florida actually has an edge here against the Rebels in Oxford, but overall Ole Miss leads this series 11-9 to 1. And Ole Miss has gotten the last two against this Gator team. Yeah, and I'll bet if you polled fans across the SEC, they would not get that answer right. I'm with you. Second down and nine after the short gain by Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. Slant pattern. To Shea Hodge is caught. That'll be close to the first down. Depends on where the nose of the football is, but he's inside the 25. Joe Hayden on the coverage. Dave, what's happened is Dan Warner, the offensive coordinator here for Ole Miss, has got Seth Adams in a little bit of a rhythm. And his, the ball's coming out on time. He's getting his feet set. He's throwing. The offensive line's doing a nice job of preventing penetration. And there's a little comfort zone their quarterback's in right now. And that's that could spell some trouble for this young Gator defense. Third down and in inches. Fullback is Jason Cook. He'll lead the way for Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. And I don't know if he got it, but a flag is down on the near side. That might get it's usually one of those uh, see it quite a bit. Defense lining up in the neutral zone. Maybe early movement by the offensive line. Offside. The lead the line. <laughs> and Ur Urban, Me Urban Meyer, one of the concerns has been the fact that this team is the most penalized group in the SEC to this point of the season. Stay tuned. Coming up, we'll have a look at the Firehouse Subs home field advantage. Is it, Dave, this is a team that puts up 55 points a game. Okay, how much of a concern are penalties? Well, I think it's a huge concern, certainly on the road, when you start talking about this defense, this team trying to adjust to the, the nuances of what that presents for a young team. Shooting yourself in your foot creates problems they're not used to. A little razzle dazzle that is. Uh, well, it had some razzle, but it had no dazzle. Well, nice job by Joe Hayden because Joe shoots in off the edge to make the play on Marche Green. Marche Green. By number three, Kyle Johnson of Florida. Back to the line. Joe Hayden shoots in off the corner spot to make the play. He just followed the receiver inside on the reverse. Nice play by the freshman. Ole Miss, the worst SEC team in the uh, red zone in terms of opportunities. Knocking on the door that 20 yard line. Second down and 19. Shea Hodge. Hodge will move it He's down to the 22-yard line. Joe Hayden with another tackle. Seth Adams has been uh, impressive for this guy. They opened up the quarterback job in the fall, actually last January, and told the guys, hey, this is things wide open. This is not just Brent Schaefer's deal. And uh, Seth Adams came in and Manage this offense very well. Dan Warner, the offensive coordinator, said it wasn't anything flashy that Seth did. It just felt like everybody was more comfortable with him under center, and it's it's paid off. 
nearly 60% completion rate. We'll lob it up here, look into the corner of the end zone. That pass is incomplete. A big hit in the secondary from Kyle Jackson. Pass intended for Mike Wallace. But Ole Miss will now bring out their field goal unit. Wallace is the home run player here, and this is a fade route versus bump and run coverage. Joe Hayden is right there on the coverage, and then Tony jo or then Jackson comes over to make sure that there's no completion. Let's go down to Buzz Baker. Hey, hey Dave, you said it absolutely right. You got to give Jackson credit for that because I think Wallace could have came down with that ball, but Jackson closed and made sure it didn't happen. 40-yard attempt on the way off the foot. Of Joshua Sheen, and it is good. And Ole Miss with an early three to nothing lead over the Florida Gators here in the first quarter. We'll return after a message from your local stations. Take a look at. Ole Miss leading three to nothing. Take a look at our Texas Speed scoring drive. Nine plays. Didn't move the uh, football very far, but four and a half minutes off the clock. They do get three points. That's exactly what Ed Ogeron wants is some points and chew up some of that clock. Joshua Sheen to kick it off. It's a line drive bouncing around. Fielded at about the 13 by Brandon James. James behind his blockers with another big return. This happened last week to the Ole Miss Club against Vanderbilt. The Commodores opened up nearly every drive when they returned a kick out near midfield. There is a flag down. Penalty marker on the play. During the return, holding 93 of the receiver's hand. 10 yard penalty for spot of the foul. First down. So you see Florida trailing for the first time this year. That's because they're scoring 55 points a game, second best in the country, averaging nine yards a play, 21 touchdowns total. I mean, that's, those are just sick-looking numbers. Yeah, they are, and this is a different situation for Florida, and really Tim Tebow's first opportunity with a deal with a little bit of adversity. They haven't moved the ball their first two series of downs. Now a little bit different thing for Tebow to deal with. One quick stat, I don't know what it means, but every team that scored first, every SEC team that has taken a lead in a game has gone on to win it. Here's Harvin. He falls forward to the 35 first down, Greg Hardy on the coverage. Boy, Ole Miss comes with a blitz. They're bringing Cassius Vaughn, the corner comes off the backside and he gets away with what I would call a spear in the middle of the back of Tim Tebow. That was a late hit that they got away with. Our first and 10 line brought to you by IKBI Incorporated, Igby, building vision, building relationships. First down, 10, four man front for Ole Miss. Whistles and a flag down in the middle of that line of scrimmage. If this is another penalty on Florida, Urban Meyer. It's already walking out to the field. I think he's seen enough of the yellow flags. 63 offense. Five yard penalty. Remember, Dave, first down. time on the road. Young guys in the line. Remember, this line got sh shaken up the first week of the season. The, the veteran trout line out. They've had to slide Watkins left tackle. Metter slides from guard to tackle. So a lot of first time they've really had to deal with an opposing team's crowd noise. That is four penalties against Florida. Here's Tebow on a keeper to the outside. Nowhere to go. Tony Fine runs him out of bounds. Well, Tony Fine will get credit for the tackle, but it's Greg Hardy, the defensive end. Play slow plays, and there he is right there. He's going to slide to the outside and just allow the linebacker to come up and make the play, Jamie Phillips. That was Jamie Phillips, the sophomore out of Oxford, Mississippi, that runs him out of bounds. That'll bring up a second down and 12. Crowd making some noise.
Tebow slings it to Harvin at the 40. He makes the catch, but that is well shy of the first down. Phillips with his second tackle in a row. Nice job of Ole Miss making Tebow reload. You'll see Bumpfake, he wanted Ingram right over the ball. He had to swivel his head to the outside and found Harvin. Jamie Phillips puts the lick on Harvin to make it third down. And Harvin makes the catch at the 47 yard line and that will be good enough for a first down. Brandon Thomas on the coverage. Ole Miss doing a good job playing zone making Tebow work the, the underneath throws he finds Harvin. Harvin does a nice job of reading the zone hooking up in a hole and Brandon Thomas makes the tackle for Ole Miss but a nice job Ole Miss trying to make Florida go the long way don't give them the explosion plays. Brandon James in the 5'6", 180 pound sophomore. And he will get the handoff off the left side. James tripped up at the 41 yard line of Ole Miss. Close captioning is provided by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Nice little change at that time. Florida runs the sweep to the outside with their really fast guy, Brandon Adams, or Brandon James gets outside. Option to the right side, and Keaston Moore is brought down by Dustin Muzon. Muzon, 5'11", 175, 21 tackles on the year. Well, play the option. You've got to whip the block to the outside, and Faison's going to block to the outside. See, the pitch is there. You've got room, but Muzon wins against the receiver to the outside and takes the pitch back away. That's an outstanding play by the corner. Five receivers for the Gators on a second down and 15. Tebow fires a slant over the middle. Pass is caught by David Nelson, but that gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Chris Strong, the middle linebacker at 6'2", 280, making the play. Dave, so far what we've seen, or what we haven't seen, is Florida run after the catch. That's something they're superior on across the board with their players, but Miss Ole Miss is doing a nice job of limiting the play after the catch. Closing in on one minute to go here in the opening quarter. On the third down and a short 10. Pass is caught at the 32 yard line, but he needed to reach the 30. Percy Harvin with yet another grab. Brandon Thomas on the coverage. They're playing some, some solid defense against this athletic offensive group. Very disciplined, Dave. They're staying in their zones, keeping everything in front of them. And then there is, just like we talked about a second ago, no run after the catch. They're on the hit. They talked about, we, we talked to the staff yesterday, they talked about how poorly they tackled them the first couple of weeks. Doing an outstanding job. John Thompson's group tackling at the highest level right now. That's something he was very concerned about coming in. Fourth down and two. The Gators going for it. Tebow, quick pass near side. Harvin one on one. Stays on his feet to the 20. Dancing around. First down, Florida at the 18 yard line. As slippery as they come in college football. Well, this had to have been a formation that Ole Miss had never seen in films. Because they get Harvin to the outside, and whenever Percy Harvin's is li lined up outside, you certainly don't want somebody playing off on him. You better be up, bump, and run. They got the ball to Harvin with a lot of room to run, and he broke a tackle. Stays on his feet. Boy, an electrifying player. And that will be the last play 
of the first quarter. Florida moving the football, but how about this? Ole Miss coming off a loss to Vanderbilt last week, taking on the third-ranked team in the country through 15 minutes. They have taken it to Florida. They lead it three to nothing. SEC football is brought to you in part by Nissan and your local Nissan dealers. Ed Ogeron and company, the head coach here at Ole Miss, a defensive guy by trade, has hired a defensive coordinator in John Thompson, but still very much involved with his defensive group, helped putting the game plan together. And they have done a nice job today trying to slow down that man's offense. Dan Mullen, the offensive coordinator of the Florida Gators. Little throwback to Harvin. Nice grab. He's at the 10, the 5, touchdown. Oh, my. Can this guy play the game of football? Electrifying. Something we hadn't seen yet, Dave, was a little misdirection. Showed a little run play one way, came back with the screen back the other way. Something I don't think is another, another wrinkle that Dan Mullins pulled out that I don't think they've seen on film. Ole Miss caught by surprise. And Harvin, if you get him in the open field, there is nobody more dangerous. And few are more exciting. Point after, up and good. Third touchdown catch of the year for Percy Harvin. That's the ninth touchdown pass from Tim Tebow. Percy Harvin, folks. He is something special. Florida leading Ole Miss 7 to 3, 1452 to go here in the second quarter. And the Gators with a nice drive to take the four point advantage. And Percy Harvin having a big day for this Gator offense. Florida came in averaging 55.7 points a game. I mean, this is what they did last week to Tennessee offensively, I think, shocked everybody in the country. I mean, that was an amazing performance. No question about it. He was working on all cylinders. Yeah, that's why you got to credit Ole Miss's defense the way they played here in the first quarter. Marche Green will take this kickoff. He's got some room. Green. To the 40, to the 45, and brought down at the 46-yard line. Nice return by Marche Green. Justin Williams makes the tackle on special teams for the Gators. Catches this on the move, and it just straight ahead. Gets good blocking up through the middle, and it's just north and south running. Now, now you get the ball at midfield, Dave, and you want that short field if you're offensive. Minded and certainly an opportunity now for Ole Miss to take it on a short field. Our Polaris first quarter stats. Florida had the majority of uh, the possession time, 824, but pretty balanced. And that's really a tribute to this uh, Ole Miss defense to this point. There's Adams, then Jarvis Green Ellis to the 46 yard line. Ben Jar Coming into this game, Ben Jarvis Green Ellis had carried the ball 77 times. Ole Miss had only rushed it 99 times as a team. There is a flag down. Incidental face mask, defense 19. Five yard penalty, and a run. First down. Well, this is one of those, he's a classic running back that. I don't think anybody gets stronger during a game, but he has the ability to wear down the other side of the football. And he's one of those guys that does that. Saw the face mask at the end of the play. And now Ole Miss at the Florida 41 with the first down. Out of the eye formation. Bruce Hall getting some action today, but they'll play action and go to the fullback, Jason Cook. Who will pick up the first down? Cook, six feet tall, 240 pounds, meeting up with Tony Joyner. 
Only his second catch of the season. He had a nice job of play calling. Get the play fake to the inside. You've had some success running the football and get the ball cooked to the outside. And, and Cook was the hammer and Joyner was the nail on that one. Talking to Dan Warner, the offensive coordinator, we were asking about the backs catching the ball, and he says, you know, we don't throw to the backs a lot. We got to keep them in to, to help protect. And I think Florida might have seen that too, but they snuck Cook out with a nice little reception. Nothing happening for Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. Thirteen forty to go here in the second quarter. Urban Meyer was very concerned about this road game. A lot of people felt that this game didn't set up well, that uh, Florida had a chance to come in here and have an easy go of it, but not that man. He understood traveling on the road in the SEC is never an easy thing. You don't know how young players are going to react. And they've been hit with some early penalties. But they have been dominant against their opponents to this point. Ole Miss has found a way to slow them down. Seth Adams, that's caught. Marche Green breaks a tackle that fumbles the football out of bounds, but they will say it's just inside the 20, and that'll be close to the first down marker. Major right over there on coverage for the Gators. Good the decision, pressure. good decision by Adams to get the ball out in the flat quickly, give Green an opportunity to shake this tackle and join her, and he does that and gets up the field. Adam swivels head to the outside. It's a weak flood. You got three receivers on the left side of the field, deep, middle, and short. He took the short throw, and then Green does a nice job of shedding the tackle and getting up the field. It's, the quarterback is doing a nice job of getting the football out on time, picking the right guy, and guys are making plays once they get the ball in their hands. You know, we had that one play, that little uh, rollout, kind of, and it was late getting the pass out. And I think that might have been a little bit of a wake up call for Seth. Yeah, since then he's been solid, hadn't he? This Ole Miss offense, a little different look than, than last year. Brent Schaefer uh, got some action last game when uh, Seth Adams went out. Schaefer, one out of five, had a 54 yard touchdown pass, but that was his first pass and then missed on his next four. And Vanderbilt came up a little bit, or excuse me, Ole Miss came up a little bit short in Nashville. Seth Adams doesn't look like that shoulder bothering at all. Robert Lane checks in. The tight end, former quarterback, and now a flag comes down, some movement. So any surprise element is taken away by the flag. But Robert Lane, we were told, will move back and uh, take some snaps. Tebow-ish, if you will. And I think that's exactly what you're saying. Start. 71 offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains you're, first out. You're looking at a run package with Lane coming in the game at quarterback. Played some quarterback early in his career here at Ole Miss. And uh, he's a guy that's a big guy that can run with the football. But you're right, Dave. You lose, you lose that element of surprise at the first time you get him in the game. Somebody jumps offside. You know, it's got to be frustrating. You work, put a new package in, surprise element, and you get a guy that jumps offside. The Gators might came very close to giving that five back. Bruce Hall in at tailback. Cook is your fullback. Here's Hall. He can't shed four white jerseys. Jermaine Cunningham led the way. The sophomore out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, with his first stop today. Florida trying to gang up against the run day. There's eight men around the line of scrimmage that time, and it looked like well, maybe Seth Adams might be checking to a play action, take a shot down the field, but went to the uh, off tackle play, the zone play to the outside, of the fullback leading, and Florida's got too many people around the football. That was an interesting conversation with uh, Coach Warner talking about he needs his quarterbacks to kind of think like he does, when to take shots, when not to force it. You have a classic example of managing a game, understanding down and distance situations, knowing when the shot to take on first down and when to get a first down on third down. They're going for a shot here to the corner of the end zone. Pass batted around and incomplete. Looking for Shea Hodge. Joe Hayden over there, the freshman, the true freshman out of Washington, Fort Washington, Maryland. Nice job of Major Wright, the freshman safety. Also, Dave, getting into the play. Just a corner route versus the, the two deep. Nobody threatens Joe Hayden in the flat so he can continue to sink at the corner spot. And then and then the young Fred, the two freshmen. I mean, <laughs> how about that? You two <laughs> true freshmen right there making that play. Major Wright to safety, Joe Hayden the corner. How about Major Wright coming in? 
It took four games, and uh, he has inserted himself as a, uh, a viable starting option at safety over a senior in Kyle Jackson. Matter of fact, against Tennessee, Major Wright played really well, according to the coaches. Pass caught near side. Pushed out of bounds at the 15 is Marche Green. Wandy Pierre Louis. Take a look at the red zone for this uh, Ole Miss offense. Only four touchdowns in 11 appearances. That's about 36%. That is dead last in the SEC. That red zone powered behind the generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. But that goes right back to what you were talking about with Dan Warner and his quarterbacks making the decisions. Now that completion puts them in a situation where they can get three here and they don't force it into coverage. Joshua Sheen from 32 yards out. It splits the uprights. So Ole Miss with a nice drive. A couple of field goals here against this Florida Gator football team. The Gators lead it by one. We're back in Oxford, Mississippi on a beautiful afternoon for football. A little cloud cover to keep the temperatures down. And we've got a good one, too. Speaking of hot, our Texas Pete scoring drive. Eight plays. And they get a field goal to make it a one-point game. Brandon James, a couple of nice kickoff returns. One was called back on a holding call against Florida. A little line drive kick, bouncing, bouncing out of bounds. And this begs the question now, it goes back to the question, do you back them up five, have them re-kick because they've been so poor? in that department or do you take it at the 35 absolutely I think you back them up and make them kick it again I mean when you asked coach uh, oh about this kick coverage team he just oh. shook his head well, you made a suggestion hey bounds. why don't you just kick the, the line drive team. five yard penalty repeat the kick one guy that's been outstanding today has been Percy Harvin with six catches 65 yards and uh, when he gets his hands on the football he is so hard to stop we talked about Dave, his touches, 14.3 yards per touch, but he's really kind of done yeoman work today. Brought his lunch pail, got all the balls underneath until the touchdown catch where he caught the little screen and got in the end zone. Did a nice job of just kind of keeping the drive alive for, for Tim Tebow catching the ball underneath. Look at the weapons offensively. I mean, the, the, the talent pool. In terms of play makers is amazing. And you know, of course, Riley Cooper wasn't in there. He just didn't have the, the number of catches, but his quality of catches. Oh, it's been, been unbelievable. Very, He's he, got Tebow's got five receivers that have caught a, touch, a pass of over 35 yards. Oh, James might have touched that, and then he will fall down at the two. What was he thinking? Panicked. Young man panicked. Buzz, what do you got? All right, now, Dave, riddle me this. Now, coaches are always very honest with us, but they always play their cards very close to the vest. Now, what happened yesterday was we asked Ed Orgeron, you know, why, if you're having this much trouble with the kicks, why don't you just go ahead and kick the line drive? And he goes, well, it's kind of like giving up. And now, it appears to me that the last couple of times they've kicked, they've done just that, and it's worked pretty well. I think he, uh, I think he was playing a little possum on us. Well, you know, who made that suggestion, Buzz, was just Dave Neal, the guy seated to my left. I'm a, I'm a kicking game <laughs> specialist, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> well, now the Gators are backed up. How about this? Back at the two-yard line. They had a drive, uh, a touchdown drive against Tennessee last week. It started very similar to this. Tebow out to about the eight, eight-and-a-half-yard line. Dustin moves on. Able to make the tackle and give Florida some breathing room. Boy, that's a nice tackle by Muzon because Tebow slid out of the pocket to his right, and there was nobody there. Muzon wraps him up and kind of hangs on to the bull till they can get him to the ground. You know, they had five touchdown drives of over 50 yards or more last week against Tennessee. I don't think they're affected by where the football is. It's just a matter of their execution has not been to their level so far. Out to about the 13 as Tebow grinds it out. You talk about this old Miss defense and how well they played to this point, Dave. We talked to Coach O yesterday, Coach Ogeron, and he talked about they've got to get the perfect fits. This is a one-gap defense, which means the guy, the front seven up front are responsible for one gap, whether they're moving one way or the other defensively. And if those guys don't fit perfectly, there's a there's a hole created. 
They're doing an outstanding job. John Thompson's group doing a nice job of fitting versus the run and, and making sure they take care of their responsible gaps. Four man front by the Rebels. Tebow keeper again. Bouncing around and driving out to the 20 yard line. Out to the 21. Tebow, 6'3, 235 pounds. A sophomore out of Jacksonville, Florida, has uh, really become the complete quarterback and the perfect match for this spread option offense. As you look at some of the scores around the country today. I saw Syracuse up 21 to 7 over in Louisville. Ball at the 21 yard line. Second down and three yards to go for the Gators. Second and short for Florida. Here's Harvard. Dancing around. Picks up the first down on a gain of six. Marcus Tillman chases him down. Third stop for Tillman. I love the way this offensive running game evolves. This is this is just the old classic counter play. Used to be back in the 80s, the Redskins used to call this the counter trade. Just pull a couple linemen out in front. It's a play that every offense who runs the football successfully runs, and this is one that they had not shown up to this point this season. It's a different looking formation. Back lined up a little bit deeper, allowing the counter to take place. Tebow. Did he let go of the football before he got out of bounds? I don't believe so. He got uh, hit pretty hard on that far sideline. Brandon Jenkins in pursuit from the defensive line spot, trying to wall him off. And yeah, he got rid of the football before he stepped out of bounds. Dangerous throw. It'll be second down and 10. Second and long, something Florida has not play, faced all year long. And a whistle. Timeout, Florida. The first time out of the half. Timeout taken by the Gators, and we'll take one as well. Back after a word from your local stations. SEC football is brought to you in part by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota's keys are featured on LFSports.com. Second down and 10 after the timeout taken by Florida. Gators will hand it off to Moore. He's got a big hole left side to the 40, to the 44-yard line. First down, Florida. Again, Dave, a situation where Florida's showing misdirection. Again, they show a play to the right, counter back to the left side. Keaston Moore carrying a football. Rutledge gets out in front on the block. There's the block right there that frees him up. Rutledge gets in, gets in, or uh, Keaston Moore gets into the secondary. Florida started this drive back at their own two yard line. Look at the rushing yards today 67 by Florida. Tebow will throw here. It's batted back. Incomplete. Well, if, you don't, if you don't get any pass rush, Dave, you're told to get your hands in the air as a defensive lineman and be able to bat that ball down, trying to hit that little short crossing route. Ole Miss playing at a high level, Dave, on defense right now. Doing that offensive line, they've had to uh, kind of reorganize some things, really since the opener with Phil Troutwine, their left tackle. Went out with a stress fracture. Now uh, Marquise, Marquise Pouncey also bothered the freshman guard. Here's James around that far side. Well, this is an offensive line that has some experience, but yet they do have to play, you know, the true freshman and a guy like Pouncey. But uh, they've been pretty good this year. Yeah, and it's a mentality day they established that, they, you know, we're, we're a power running team. Everybody thinks we spread it out and we throw it all over the yard. And they do have some success throwing it to the tune of 286 a game. but. You know what? They hit you for 235 right. running the ball, too. And that's really their mentality. We want to come off and mash you running the ball. Third down and one. This is one of those mashing type of downs. Got a little confusion. Tebow referring to the wine list on his left wrist, which is the play call list. And Florida will have to take a timeout. Timeout, Florida. Their second time out of the half. 9.02 to go in the second quarter. Back to Oxford after this.
Today's game is brought to you by Alltel, the official wireless partner of fans. Third down, short two, long one. A couple of tied ends. Tebow just right up the middle of that line. Picks up about four. That'll be a first down. They'll actually move his spot back to about the 43-yard line. Ray Jerry with the stop. Just going to run in behind his big center, Drew Miller. Drew Miller does a nice job of turning the defender right over the ball. And that's all, that's all Tebow does is hit it straight up the middle to get the first down. There's John Thompson, the defensive coordinator, former head coach in college football, long time defensive guru, if you will, been around. Tebow will throw, a little wobbly pass. Looking for Percy Harvin. For more on uh, John Thompson, let's go downstairs, check in with Dave Baker. Dave, you know, John Thompson, for people that are familiar with him, 24 years he's been in college coaching, 10 different schools. He said he came here, quote, to help out Bebe Ogeron, and he's known Ed for a long time. But the thing that, that Thompson said was they went back to spring practice this week in terms of looking at film, in terms of tackling. He said this group has not done a good job with things they have not seen, but they came out ready to play today, and I, I think Dave Archer, they've done an awfully nice job of adjusting. They really have, and they've created some problems for Tebow. Tebow's not in his normal, settled situation. Here's Harvin, though. It's apparent where Florida wants to go with the football today, and that is Percy Harvin. Tebow has completed uh, eight of 13 passes for 83 yards. He has 39 yards rushing, but uh, Harvin is slow to get up. Do a nice job, just a quick stand up, throw it out to Harvin on the outside, and. Percy got turned around. It looks like he might have fallen on the football here, too. Ball right under his stomach as he fell to the ground. Good job of blocking downfield by Murphy, Lewis Murphy. See, watch him fall on the ball right there. I think that's just a matter of lost his win. There's Bubba Caldwell on the sideline, closing in on the all time record for receiving at Florida. I was certainly. Closing in on his brother. Yeah, Bubba out with a sprained knee, but uh, getting closer and closer to getting back to 100%. And Harvin pops up. You're probably right, David. Looks like he might have just fallen on the nose of that football and knocked the wind out of him. How about seven catches already with 8.22 to go in the second quarter for Percy Harvin? <laughs> God. Join us next Saturday at 12.30 Eastern. We'll see if somebody can have as many catches as Percy as Mississippi State takes on number 12, South Carolina. Should be a lot of fun in Columbia. Log on to LSSports.com and click on the Regions Bank Road Trip Planner for the quickest routes and all the information you need traveling around the SEC. Out of the shotgun, Tim Tebow, first down and 10. Another rush by Tim Tebow, and this time he picks up about nine close to the 20-yard line. Dave, there is nothing complex about that at all. I mean, that is just a snap, Tebow off left guard. I mean, is it as simple as that? It really is, Dave. It's just power running, get in behind the big offensive line and let Tebow kind of pick his daylight, run to daylight, if you will. Uh, he's a big, strong runner, and they got a great big offensive line. Just come off and add on a hat. You know, we saw a little bit of that last week when both of our quarter starting quarterbacks left the game, uh, Mississippi State and Auburn. And, you know, they brought in two true freshmen. And it was a lot of the same thing. Snap to the uh, to the quarterback of the shotgun, run left, run right. It creates an opportunity where you don't have to have the lead back. You now have you're snapping it to your tailback, so you can deploy more people, both to spread the defense with receivers, move people out of the box, and get more people in the blocking scheme as well. So you take some of the people out of the the setup mix and help it create problems defensively the way you deploy. I believe that's Dustin Muzan down the corner, the junior out of Orlando, Florida. Of course, uh, he had a 99-yard interception return for a touchdown against Memphis back in week one. Muzan trying to get in on the tackle there. Number 12 comes in, looked like maybe one of his own players came in and laid a lick on him. Looks like just maybe a little head-to-head -head contact. Maybe that head got jerked 
in an awkward direction. Looked like Jamarcus Sanford came in and might have hit Muzan as hard as he hit Tebow. There's Muzan with that Mohawk. And Percy Harvin checks back in for Florida as Muzan jogs off the field. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Wasn't quite on the football day, but what oh, happened was Dr. Second. Pete was over there looking at Percy Harvin's left pelvic area. Not really a hip pointer, but that pelvic bone. He really spent most of that time off the field trying to loosen it up, but he immediately grabbed the helmet and would rather try to loosen it up on the field. Well, he is back in the lineup for Florida. James in motion near side. Tebow by himself in the shotgun. Here comes some pressure. Tebow hit as he throws. They have James near side. Look at him dance around to the 10 yard line. First down, Florida at the nine. Dave, perfectly defense. You've got a defender out there. He just misses the tackle. You got Brandon James in the flat. Kendrick Lewis misses the tackle. That's the fifth missed tackle by this old Miss defense. And that's really what they're planning on. They're gambling on the fact you're going to miss Brandon James in the open field. Two missed tackles on that play. Nice job of taking away the downfield throw. You got what you wanted. Now you got to make the tackle. That's five missed tackles by this Ole Miss defense. And that is something the coach has told us for the Rebels that they cannot afford those today. They've got to play near perfect football. Debo and a little keeper dancing around to the five, down to the three. Touchdown, Florida. Boy, how strong is this kid? Does an outstanding job with a little sidestep in the hole. Gonna come right to you. Watch his little sidestep right there. He found the hole. And that's Sanford coming up, and he just runs right through Jamarcus Sanford's tackle. He talked to Ed Orgeron and his staff. They talked about how you tackle Tim Tebow. He said, go low. Do not try to tackle him high. Well, Sanford found that out. He tried to go high, and Tebow ran him right into the end zone. That is the sixth rushing touchdown this year for Tim Tebow, who now has 56 yards on the ground. We will return after this message from the SEC. 14-6, third-ranked Florida over Ole Miss. It's just over seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Kickoff sails down to the two-yard line. Marche Green on the return for Ole Miss out to the 25-yard line. Texas Pete scoring drive for Florida. It was a long, lengthy drive for Tim Tebow and company. They went 98 yards. And, and really, there was nothing. It didn't seem like a complex drive. It was basically, for the most part, power football. Well, what they've settled into doing, Dave, is they realize that Ole Miss is going to play off, play zone, make them throw the ball underneath. So they're taking the quick throws to the outside. Brandon James, Percy Harvin, and then if they're going to run the football, they're going to run power with Tebow right at them. And they've settled into that, and it, it, that's what they've done on both their touchdown drives. And you said during the break, this is an important drive for Ole Miss, perhaps. This is an opportunity for them to try to regain some of the balance of the game. The toss sweep near side, Ben Jarvis Green Ellis for the 35 and run out of bounds, close to the first down marker. Major Wright, the 205 pound true freshman. Out of Miramar, Florida with the tackle. Once again, when you do the eye toss, your fullback's got to get it done for you. In this offense, the, the tailback follows the fullback on this play. Good job by Cook to get the block. But a lot of these zone plays, Dave, we talked to this offensive group, Dan Warner, and the offensive group here at Ole Miss. The fullback runs the play as if he's carrying the football, and then he finds the different color jersey, and that's the block he gets, and Ben Jarvis Green Ellis runs off of that. Six carries, 32 yards for Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. And the eye formation. He'll take it to the 39, does Ben Jarvis Green Ellis? First down for Ole Miss. You know, this, is, this is what they needed, Dave. They come out and reestablish themselves physically here. Come back out, get back to what they do best, run the football. Again, another nice block by Cook, the fullback. And, and now you move the chains, you continue to work the clock. I think if you're a quarterback, I don't think it's ever too early against Florida to where you start working the clock every play. I formation again, a little play action this time. Adams rolls right, has time, firing. Pass is caught on that far side. Michael Hicks with the reception. And that'll be a first down. But 
That's what that running game gives you, the opportunity to use a lot of play action. Exactly right. They get the boot off of it, Dave. And this is a well-thrown ball and an outstanding route by Hicks. He turns Juan de Pierre-Louis completely around. It's the deep comeback route, which gives the quarterback time to get outside, break contain. That route's about a 20-yard route, well-thrown ball and an outstanding route by Hicks to turn Pierre-Louis hips around. It looks like a pretty good easy throw for a quarterback. Do you like that one? Was that always a good throw for you to roll out? I always liked when I was outside and the big guys couldn't get to me. Hit <laughs> <laughs> hard to screen Ellis. We'll get a couple of yards on that. Joe Hayden steps up from his corner spot to make a tackle for Florida. Take a look at our Firehouse Subs home field advantage. Look at some of the largest crowds here in history at Vaught Hemingway Stadium. Of course, the uh, Stadium expanded a few years ago. I like to call it the uh, the addition that Eli built. <laughs> it's a beautiful stadium. They have really done a wonderful job here. Pete Boone, the athletic director, and of course Chancellor Robert Kayette. By the way, happy birthday to Pete Boone. Told me he was 37 today. <laughs> I don't believe him. <laughs> Here's Adams again. Pass is dropped by Marche Green. Got what they wanted. They got Florida to come with some pressure, be able to get the ball out quickly. The ball floated a little bit right here on Adams. The ball, you see his sail a little bit, float a little bit. Green had to wait on the ball, and he could feel Joyner closing. Oh, but you got to make that catch. No question about it. But you see the little peak to the inside. He knew the hand hunter was coming for Florida. Loose football out on the field. See that in baseball. Don't see that too often in football. Ole Miss has really done a nice job. I think Dan Warner, the uh, offensive coordinator, has called a pretty good game today. Adams. He will be dropped. Ole Miss quarterbacks between Adams and Schaefer last week were sacked six times, but that's the first time today. Well, this time they step up the pressure a little bit and play man coverage behind it. Jermaine Cunningham is going to get to the quarterback, ultimately number 49, to get the sack. Does a nice job, but it's the coverage down the field that made Adams hold the football. Juan de Pierre Louis took away the throw that Adams wanted, that deep in cut. He just had no chance because of the coverage, and Jermaine Cunningham is the benefactor with the sack. Brandon James back to return the punt of Justin Sparks. He stands inside the 10. He will let it hit at the 15. It'll take an old Miss bounce. And boy, that nearly hit Chris Rainey in the back leg. That would have been a tough break for Florida. A 33-yard punt, and the best news for Ole Miss, no return. Here's a look at our advanced auto parts driving the SEC championship standings. Of course, Florida and South Carolina off to good starts in league play. Kentucky with a uh, tough test tonight against Arkansas. Arkansas 0-1 after that tough loss to Alabama. What a great football game. We got home in time uh, from our game at Auburn last week to, to catch that one. It, I mean, just a great day of football. Kentucky-Louisville, what a fantastic finish. If you're a Kentucky fan, I'm sure it wasn't that fantastic <laughs> if you're a Cardinal fan. Here's first down and 10 for the Gator offense. Just went 98 yards on their last drive. Tebow has all day to throw. Harvin on the near side, dancing around, bouncing around. He's got plenty of room on the far side if he can get a couple of blocks, but flags are down. And Harvin out to the 30-yard line. But there were uh, a couple of flags that came in. right at the same spot. During the run, block in the back, 56 offense. Half the distance to the goal from the flag. Repeat first out. Well, you see that happen so many times in a scramble situation like that. Yeah, the play is designed to go this way, and he gets all the way to the backside. But uh, how about the drive that, that we just saw, Dave? Brandon James makes the mistake, and then it was just a matter of getting back to what they do, come after the running game, power running game. And then when we talked about the short passing game, 
James gets the catch in the flat, and then Tebow with the power to run through the Sanford tackle for the touchdown. They just got back to really kind of nuts and bolts, so we're just going to come right at you with the running game. They will set up at the eight yard line on the first and 15. Pass is tipped, it's in the air. Nate Banks just couldn't turn around quickly enough to uh, respond to that. Ashley Palmer with the tip. Tebow pass. Yeah, I wanted to try to get the ball to Lewis Murphy on the post route. And this is a timing route. Shoot it. He kept the center and kept the safety in the middle of the field, but Ashley Palmer off the ground to knock that down. That's a timing route. You saw Tebow's eyes locked on the safety. As soon as he kept him in the field, he shot it out there. Tebow gets a signal from the sidelines to change the play. Play clock at three. That is well shy of the first down. Jeremy Garrett, the nose tackle, steps up to make that tackle. Go to Yahoo Sports to see over 50 Lincoln Financial Sports SEC football and basketball games. And for only $4.95 per month, you can hear thousands of audio broadcasts. Be sure and follow your team all season long at Yahoo Sports. That's a great opportunity here for Ole Miss to try to get this Florida offense off the field, give themselves a short field. Tebow stands in the pocket, throws behind Faison. And that'll bring up a fourth down. He wanted Faison to set it down right there. Faison kept running through, and you see the two young men getting together and talking there on the field. Tebow wanted his receiver to set it down, but again, nice job. Ole Miss dropped eight into coverage, clouded the look for the young quarterback. And he threw the ball a little off balance and behind his receiver. So Jazz Henry will have to punt it away again for Florida. Marche Green back to return. He stands at the 37. Good kick from Henry. Fair catch called for and taken by Marche Green at the 33 yard line, a 51 yard punt. Fans, log on now to LFSports.com to enter the Aaron's College Football Dream Weekend Contest. You and a guest could win a trip to the college football game of your choice. Other prizes include a 42-inch flat panel high-definition television courtesy of Aaron's. 2.47 to go. That was a big-time punt right there, Dave, for Florida. Florida stopped by this Ole Miss defense and looked like Ole Miss might get the ball around midfield, but a boom, a 51-yard punt. Was able to get the ball back down in Ole Miss territory. That'll help your net average. A little trickery coming from Ole Miss, and it works. Marche Green and flags come in. A face mask coming, but a little uh, trickery from Ed Ogeron. The old hidden ball route trick here. The line stands up so Florida can't see what's going on in the backfield. And then Marche Green comes out. Adams takes the snap and just sticks it in Green's stomach. And he gets around the edge. And then you get the face mask attack on top of that. But the you can see how the offensive line stood up. And then it's just a sweep to the left side. But Seth Adams took the snap. Both he and Marche Green were bent over. He stuck the ball in his stomach and came around the corner. Something you see on a Friday night. So a personal foul face mask will move the ball. End of Florida territory at the 32 with 2.40 to go before halftime. Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis in at tailback. But Adams will throw. Pass caught near side. Shea Hodge breaks a tackle, then gets popped. Loose football. I think it's out of bounds. Who will have possession? I think it'll still be Ole Miss football. Yes. Florida had a chance, but couldn't contain it before it went out of bounds. And that will result in a first down. Well, first of all, it's a nice job of gearing down to catch the football. It's a little behind him. Then he gets up the field, and here comes Major Wright. Wow, shades of shades of the guy who used to play that position, Renzi Nelson. You see the legs are out of bounds, and once he's touched the ball and the leg's out of bounds, it is out of bounds. That's a fumble today by Major Wright. Coach is told us they love him. Great athlete, guy that loves to hit. I mean, he is the prototypical safety 
over the years for this Gator defense. Boy, they've had a few good ones, haven't they? They lost uh, for secondary last year. Lost guys like Reggie Lewis, Reggie Nelson, Ryan Smith, but uh, they've got some young guys that can play in that secondary. Adams, Hodge again near side. Here's one of those young guys, Joe Hayden, working on the coverage for Florida. Five tackles now for Hayden. Take a look at our Honda Generator red zone. This is Florida defensively. They've only given up three touchdowns and 10 uh, opponent opportunities. That's a pretty good figure. You got to like that if you're Greg Madison and Charlie Strong, the co-defensive coordinators. This is where you got to get back to Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. He's got to run the football a little bit down here. They'll play action to Green Ellis. Adams running, throwing to the end zone. Incomplete. Looking for Michael Hicks. It was a nice job. They wanted the same play that he completed earlier. Where he rolled to his right and found Hicks on that comeback, but major right flying out of the center of the field kind of prevented that throw. Now Warner, this is a situation where you're trying to all you're trying to do is get a first down here. Trying to create some type of matchup. You got to figure Florida's probably going to play man coverage. Get Mike Wallace or somebody one on one. Wallace is in the slot to the top of the screen. He's right up here. Be a good guy to try to get the ball to. And whistles. Flag on the inside. Michael Orr, the junior, pops up, and it's when he pops up, you know it. 6'5, 325. You can't hide. False start. 71 offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Oh, and you just can't have it, though, Dave. Those are mistakes that, you know, you go from third and four, and you got everything available. Run the football, all sorts of stuff. And you just cannot pop out of your stance. You got to hold your water, be disciplined enough to give Seth Adams an opportunity to convert because the percentages go from about 50% to about 25% in this situation. That was both Orr and Neely, the left side of the line basically popping up, third down and nine. Single setback is Green Ellis. Seth Adams dropped at the 30-yard line by Derek Harvey, his third sack of the year. Now this is a matchup. If I'm Derek Harvey, my eyes get pretty big because I got a tight end, Robert Lane, blocking me, and then I'm going to have the back chip on me. Here they are over here on this right side. It just, it's the tight end in the back trying to block, block one of the best pass rushers in the SEC. It's just not going to work. He also got a great jump on that left side of that line. 48-yard field goal attempt on the way from Joshua Sheen. He's hit a couple of times already today. This kick on the way, bending in there and just shy. So Ole Miss misses uh, misses out on an opportunity. They backpedal. They got well, they, inside the 25 and ended up losing about 15 yards. Yeah, what you get is your third and four. You're sitting there. It's a conversion situation. You're going to be able to get your ball to one of your speed guys on a crossing route. You get the penalty. Now it's third and nine. Florida goes to a zone four-man pass rush. You talked about Harvey with the great jump off the edge, and he gets a sack. So the penalty and the sack, and you come away with no points. Just a couple of mistakes. And with 121, this defense had better uh, buckle up the chin straps because Florida will certainly try to stick some more points on the board here. Here's Tim Tebow. Off to Moore. He's brought down at the 38-yard line by Ashley Palmer. Palmer did a nice job that time floating and kind of staying in his position. He's in his zone. He could have come up to try to take Tebow, but he didn't. He stayed back, was able to make the tackle on Keiston Moore. So Florida will no huddle it here. Second down and one inside a minute. Only one timeout left for the Gators. Pass over the middle, caught by the tight end. First down. That's too easy. All Ingram did is read this middle linebacker. Middle linebacker ran about 20 yards downfield. He just hooked in front of him. Tebow put his ball on him. A couple more of those, they'll be in field goal range. Clock runs again. And 
Once again, a flag. Looked like the guard, Carlton Metter, might have popped up. Actually, Metter out at the tackle spot. Five yard penalty, remains first down. The hottest act in music is Daughtry. The band performs in Clearwater, Florida at uh, Ruth Eckert Hall on October 8th and at the Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida on October 9th. Daughtry, the top selling artist of 2007. They were just awarded plaques last week commemorating the sale of their three millionth album. Tebow stands in the pocket, but dump it off. Here's Moore tripped up at the 40. That'll keep the clock moving. Do you burn the timeout? Yes, Florida will call the timeout. That'll bring up about a second down and four. And a flag down in the backfield. Maybe a face mask or hold against Florida. Wow. Oh, got a break. Ole Miss has kind of gone into kind of a, a, a prevent style of defense. And it's creating some huge holes Illegal underneath. Illegal use of hands. Offense number 77, hands to the face. Ten yard penalty. Still first down. You got to stay stay with what got you to this point. It's 14 to 6. 25 seconds left in the half. You've done an outstanding job time defensively on of We're limiting this offense, but it's because you played be solid zone. Seconds. You haven't been giving up the easy throws. These guys run too well after the catch. Of course, Florida and Urban Meyer tried to defend that national championship. They've moved up to third in the rankings, but it is not an easy uh, task to defend a national title. But the SEC, since this league formed in 1992, one of the uh, criticisms was when they went to the divisional play that in a championship game, you wouldn't be able to win a national title. Well, they've had five since 92. <laughs> and, you know, one of the th and in terms of repeat national champions, as we were talking about, Nebraska, the last team to do it back in 94 and 95, the last SEC team was uh, Alabama in 78 and 79. Well, that's just been a difficult period. I don't care what the setup is. It's tough to win, a, win it back to back. Urban Meyer has stormed on the, to the college football scene. Second uh, winning as coach with coaches among uh, with at least five years of experience. Debo lofts it up. Pass. Overthrown, looking for Lewis Murphy. Nate Banks on the coverage, the senior out of Liberty, Mississippi. And an Ole Miss Rebel down at about the 35 yard line. It might be Greg Hardy. It looks like he's holding that right arm. I can't tell who the, the Rebel is on the field. He's not moving much. Ole Miss did a great job of getting back to what they were doing there. Nice job of coverage. Uh, Nate Banks was in perfect position on the throw. Was able to create a problem. Got the left side here. Oh, it's the chip. The infamous chip. You saw Keiston Moore, and he got the rib cage of Greg Hardy. It's right over here, folks. And that's the classic chip. And that's what you, if you're an offensive tackle, that's your best friend is your back slipping out of the backfield. You got a, a fire breather coming off the edge like a Greg Hardy. If you can get your back to chip on him and uh, and Keiston Moore, those are the kind that that when you talk about slowing a pass rush now down, you hope that Greg can come back in. But that's going to be planted in his mind that Keiston Moore is going to slip out to that side and take a shot at those exposed ribs. Tim Mullins, the head trainer, athletic trainer. For this Ole Miss football team out there, he's been having to work hard this week. A lot of guys getting nicked up. It's, it's that time of the year when conference play begins, and uh, guys are on the field for 55, 60 snaps a game. Get a little banged up. Well, he's played well today. Oh, he's he and, he and Tillman have been really good. Four tackles on the day. He's had a couple of pressures, a couple of big big licks on Tebow. Turner checks in at that end. He'll put some pressure on Tebow. But Tebow gets the pass off to Harvin. Harvin, look at him dance around to midfield. He's at the 40 and out of bounds with eight seconds to go here in the opening half. And he's about a yard. Where are they going to spot this at the uh, 33? Yeah, he's about a yard shy of the first down. Now this is a situation where if you're 
You're Ole Miss. You need to come up on the edge and play the quick throw. They're going to try to throw it to the flat and get a little bit more yardage for a first for a field goal attempt. Well, they dump it over the middle of Brandon James. They'll get the first down. That will stop the clock for a moment. And can they ground the football before the clock runs out? Tebow ready to go. Let's see what happens. They'll have to wait to set the chains. Crowd booing, but the chain crew on the far side not quite ready to go. They're having some issues over there. And Tebow able to ground it, but that'll do it. They couldn't. They could not stop the clock. A strange ending to the first half. Well, that was a weird conclusion. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Coach, you talked yesterday about going back to basics with your guys on defense. I thought they played awfully yeah. good defense. Really time. playing well against a very good offensive football team. We missed a couple of tackles. I think John's doing a great job of calling the game. Our guys are ready to play. We've got a lot of football left. This is an explosive football yep. team. We've got to make some plays in the red zone down there. We'll get a chance. Offensively, you've been pretty efficient, too. Been pretty efficient, but we're still living in the red zone. But uh, we're ready, man. I'm looking forward to the second half. All right, thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. Ed Ogeron, upbeat as always, but he's got reason to be. His Rebels are in it, trailing the Gators 14-6. to While inexperienced, getting better with every snap, and they have played with some kind of attitude today as they trail uh, by just eight, 14 to six. Time now to head back upstairs to Dave Neal and Dave Archer, the two guys who will bring you home. And fellas, this is kind of the template that Ed Ogeron needed to have in order for his football team to have a chance to pull this big upset. Yeah, Dave, in talking to our meetings, he said that they had to play a pretty uh, good football game, sound fundamentally. And I think the most impressive thing is this is a defense that's been lit up pretty much through three games. They've held this team at Florida that scores 55 points a game to just 14. And it's been a very simple process. They What they've done is they played a lot of zone, kept Florida's players in front, and, and Florida's had to adjust offensively. They've had to go more to their running game, throw the ball underneath, more workmanlike type plays, no explosion plays at all for Florida. Yeah, you know, the uh, Tim Tebow has been really the only rushing offense, and uh, Florida is a, is a football team that has the capability to beat you a lot of ways, but Ole Miss has done a nice job. Ole Miss has done an outstanding job they've, they've been able to when they got it in the red zone you heard coach Ogeron right before the break we got to be able to get the ball in the end zone they've settled for three a couple times here's really the one big play Percy Harvin made it was just a backside screen he was able to get it in the end zone but again Ole Miss has really limited what Florida's been able to do and Tebow's been the workhorse unbelievable the quarterback running the football right through the middle yeah Tim Tebow 10 carries 64 yards his longest rush however is only nine yards but you look at the uh, infinity halftime stats and Ole Miss Ben Jarvis Green Ellis has yet to get cranked up only 39 yards on the ground but yet they have done a nice job in at least picking up a couple of first downs on some drives. They, they possess the football been able to move the chains Ben Jarvis Green Ellis 4.8 yards a carry he's only toted it eight times so they've gotten a lot out of him. and there's only two minutes of differential in the time of possession very po very positive. How about Percy Harvin with nine catches for 104 yards in the first half. Wow. 14-6 Florida. Tebow 12 carries 75 yards today. They'll keep it again left side inside the five touchdown Tim Tebow and the Florida Gators. 14 to six Florida leading Ole Miss the third ranked Gators up by eight. Let's go down check in with Dave Baker. Different things. They've seen an awful lot here today. How do you feel like they're uh, doing a good job? They're playing a lot of cover two and forcing us to be real patient on offense. I'd probably do the same thing. So uh, we've had silly penalties and we can't have silly penalties. You do that, I think we're playing okay. All right, thanks, coach. We appreciate it. Best of luck, second half. Urban Meyer probably had a chance to, uh, I guess, refocus. His, his uh, staff and his players during that uh, meeting at halftime. Let's check in with uh, our partner Dave Archer. Yeah, this is the Nissan Coaches Corner, Dave, and we're going to focus here on is we're going to focus on 
Harvey coming off the edge. Derek Harvey's right out here, one of the premier pass rushers in the SEC. You want to use two guys to block him. You see, you got two defense, two def uh, blockers to block Harvey. Well, you got to get him blocked. That's a tight end and a running back. Ben Jarvis Green Ellis whiffs on him, and that's why Harvey is one of the premier guys, was the MVP of the National Championship class last year with three sacks, and he's got one today, and that stopped that drive for Ole Miss. Well, this Ole Miss team, uh, a lot of people didn't give them a chance coming into this game, and they've got a chance. They get the football to open up the second half. Number They're down, you know, a touchdown and two-point conversion. Two, what do you think? You walk into the, the room, Marcia Coach Ogeron's room on a Thursday, and you say, okay, here's the scenario, Coach O. We're going to let you get the ball to open the second half. You're only down 14-6. You take that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think so. A great opportunity now for Ole Miss to come out and start the second half. That first five minutes of the second half establish some kind of tempo in their favor. Ehas will kick it away. Bounces at the 15 on a one hop to Marche Green. And Green out to the 30 yard line. Marche Green on the return to the 30 yard line. 26 yard return. John Jones the true freshman out of Sarasota with a special teams tackle and this Ole Miss offense uh, behind Seth Adams. You know they, they didn't turn it over. As we said uh, at halftime a few minutes ago, they, they picked up, you know, a couple of first downs. You know, it wasn't three and out, three and out, so they, they ate up some clock. And they actually, when they did a little play action, rolling Adams yeah. out, they had some success with that. Had a little had a little success, but they're going to have to continue to get Ben Jarvis Green Ellis has got to be a feature guy what they do offensively. There's a roll out. That pass is batted up in the air so <laughs> I think Florida realized that they had Ole Miss had had some success on the little sprint out Joe Hayden you know if the corners closing on this play Dave this is some adjustments that were made by the defensive staff for Florida as this is this was a play that was there Lane was slipping in the flat Coach Joe thought that that might be one that gets out the gate to start out the drive and a good play by freshman Joe Hayden that'll bring up a second down and ten Seth Adams in that first half. Nine out of 15. Hands off left side, loses five to Ben Jarvis Green Ellis and swarmed by the white jerseys. Well, this is an opportunity for one of the two teams to seize control of the tempo of the game. Harvey just fights through on a slant and gets into the backfield, unable to get a hat on him. And uh, he makes the play in the backfield. Nice job of beating Reed Neely to the play. And now you're third and long. And this is certainly what Urban Meyer was looking for from his defense. And good pressure. Adam steps up, pump fakes, will run and then slide at the 32. Probably a wise decision, but that will bring up a fourth down. And a punting opportunity now for the Rebels. Pressure well, gets, came from Jermaine Cunningham. Gets the pressure from Cunningham coming around the edge, but he does a nice job as a quarterback. Slide up in the pocket, help your tackle out. Nice job there. Maurice Miller runs Cunningham around, but again, good coverage down the field. Seth Adams makes the right decision. Get up the field and hit the deck. So Brandon James back to return the punt of Justin Sparks. Flag down to line of scrimmage and a good kick from Sparks. James all the way back to the 15 and a flag down as James made the catch. Maybe a little interference with the diminutive one. Such a great kick that Nate Banks, who was down there and doing an excellent job of coverage, just couldn't wait long enough for the ball to come down. Just a huge kick. 53 yard punt. We just missed it. On that on that replay, it looked again good coverage by Ole Miss. That's a long punt. They got down there, were able to get Brandon James wrapped up to a minimal game. And the rule is, and they changed this a couple of years ago. There is no more like halo rule. It's you just have to give the return man an opportunity to field the ball without being banged around, and that he was bumped a little bit on right. the play. You got to give him the opportunity to make a play sure, on the ball. And exactly. that, that, that includes a bump.
Coach Meyer trying to figure out what is the. Uh... We have two fouls on the play. Illegal formation on the offense. That penalty's declined. Kick catching interference, number 28 of the kicking team. That penalty will be accepted from the spot, 15 yards. Coach Meyer trying to figure out which one of those will benefit him the most. And he will take the second infraction. So, Dave, what did you think about uh, Florida's offensive selection in the first half, and do they change it up here? No, I think you get back to doing what you did. Workman like this again. Here's the running play, the counter play. Getting up the field with Keystone Moore, but this is what they featured, Dave, uh, to hit the end of the half, and they had a lot of success with it until Ole Miss makes an, a commitment to put more people around the line of scrimmage. I think this is what you're going to see. As you look at the first half possessions for this Florida team, and uh, you know they had that 77-yard uh, drive for a touchdown, 98-yard drive that went 14 plays. Now they're looking at a first and ten from the Gator 44. Here's Moore dancing around. He'll pick up 17 more. So a quick 30 yards and two carries for Keiston Moore. Jamie Phillips brings him down. Really nothing special about what's going on here. Just a straight handoff up the middle to Keiston Moore and another missed tackle at the second level. Just straight ahead. Keiston Moore goes right in behind his big center, Drew Miller. Jim Tart on that side. Another missed tackle. The eighth missed tackle now by this old Miss defense. Moore now four carries, 34 yards. You look at Dan Mullen. The offensive coordinator, just 35 years old. Moore bouncing around, can't shake the second tackle of Tony Fine, the junior out of Port Orchard, Washington. He's a great story. Three and a half years in the Army, served in Iraq. Junior College All-American at Scottsdale Community College. Good, pen good penetration by Jerry. And then the final to tackle by Brandon Thomas. But Jerry forced the play in the backfield, allowed Thomas to get there and make the play. Nice penetration by Ole Miss up front. Five receivers set on second down and 14. Pass dropped over the middle, right in the hands of David Nelson. Ole Miss showed a four-man line zone behind Dave, and this time they're going to drop Marcus Tillman, the big defensive end. He's going to slide back out into coverage. Tillman drops out and becomes an eighth man in coverage. Tebow's got no throw down the field, and this is one Nelson kind of was a little concerned about where that linebacker was more than he was catching the football. Caught at the 25 yard line. That'll go to Lewis Murphy. Cassius Vaughn on the coverage for the Rebels, but that'll move the chains. Boy, nice job of Florida stepping up and picking up the blitz. Tebow's going to set his feet in his throw. He takes one right in the chops as he lets it go, but he's got the post route. It's man coverage. It's one you can let go early because it. it it completely shows itself right away. As soon as the blitz comes, there's nobody in that intermediate area to cover. You can let it go early and get the ball out. Play fake to Harvin, and Tebow is crushed again as he throws. Incomplete. Looking for his tight end slash wide receiver, Cornelius Ingram. But, boy, Tebow is getting popped pretty good here. Yeah, this is Chris Strong, the middle, big middle linebacker. He's going to shadow the quarterback. Tebow, the little boot fake. And this is Chris Strong just plants him. Chris Strong now, you got to understand, he's a linebacker, but he goes 6'2", 280, and he's just a freshman. Probably see him on that defensive front once they get some linebacker help here at Ole Miss. Four-man front for the Rebels, but the Gators looking at the 24-yard line of Ole Miss on second down and 10. Three receivers near side. Debo will keep it. Breaks a tackle to the 20 and hogtied at the 19 by Ashley Palmer, who now has seven tackles today. And this is another design run. Chris Strong, the big fella, had another shot at him, and the 
as the missed tackles continue to mount. You mentioned the missed tackle there, Dave. That's their tenth of the game now. And you're talking, when you start talking about missing 10 tackles, now you start talking about a nice chunk of yardage. You know, you start tackling a guy, uh, a missed tackle where a guy runs for 10 or 15 yards, that really begins to pile up. Look at our Aaron scoreboard. There's Missouri, ranked number 25. They knocked off this Ole Miss team a couple of weeks ago. Tebow. It's Harvin. That's his 10th catch, and he breaks another tackle down to the 10 yard line. That's another first down. Florida offense in the red zone. This year, 18 touchdowns and 21 opportunities. You want to talk about having some success. 85% touchdowns. That's second in the SEC, only to Kentucky, who's at 87 and a half. That red zone powered behind the generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. Out of the shotgun, three receivers near side. Tebow will keep it, dancing around. He will pick up about five down to the six yard line. Chris Strong and Brandon Thomas converge on that stop. And I think that number is going to stay that high throughout the year for this Florida offense because your featured runner is your quarterback. And his ability to throw the football and run it at the same time creates major problems. Talked about it earlier. You don't have to commit people in the backfield to give the football to or as a blocker. You can spread the field now. Now he is the power runner behind the line or he can raise up and throw to one of five receivers which he has on this play. Tebow 12 carries 75 yards today. He'll keep it again left side inside the five touchdown Tim Tebow and the Florida Gators. Well, Dave, you got five receivers in the pattern, so as a defense, you've got to make sure that you have enough people deployed to defend that, as well as get some rush. They do a nice job. They make it look like pass. Tebow's going to show pass. It's run all the way. See the lineman get the block, and then your receivers have to block down the field. Nice job of getting a block down the field for Tebow to get him in the end zone. of the afternoon for Tim Tebow. In his career, he has 15 career rushing TDs and 14 passing touchdowns. Florida's extended their lead to 21 to six with just over 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Look at our Texas Pete scoring drive, 10 plays, another lengthy drive, 70 yards. All three of their scoring drives have been very long, successful drives. Mixing in uh, the pass and the run. I mean, they've been very balanced on their scoring touchdown drive. And Tim Tebow has been very disciplined in what he's taken. He's made a lot of big plays coming into this game, but he's taken the short throws. Good catch by Marseille Green on the kickoff, and then he is met at the 28 yard line by John Jones. 22 yard return. Let's go back to the touchdown for a moment. Dave, this is what I'm talking about these receivers. Look how they spread the field. Five receivers now, and look how the defense is spread out. Tebow's going to simulate pass, now going to take off on the run. They get the middle seal, now the receiver block. Right there, the receiver block to get Tebow to the sideline. And Tebow, this that power run, run through tackles, strong in the lower half to get up the field and get in the end zone. 16 of 26, 184 yards, 13 carries, 80 yards. Here's a young man that is uh, third in the NCAA in passing efficiency. And Leads the SEC in total offense. Bruce Hall with a big chunk of change for the Rebels. Out over the 40 to the 44-yard line. Kyle Jackson with the tackle, but that'll be a first down. Yeah, big drive here for Old Miss now, Dave. But Florida sees command of the tempo of this game. Bruce Hall with a nice job. Good blocking up front to create the hole for Hall to get in there and get the first down. This is an opportunity now. Mississippi or Old Miss has changed the, the field a little bit. He got to punch this in the end zone. Well, they need a spark offensively, especially to help keep that defense off the field. Five man front for Seth Adams. He now has time to throw. He's going deep. As a man, Michael Hicks, and the pass is caught at the five yard line. He beat Wadi Pierre Louis. What a catch! By Michael Hicks, 49 yards. Two guys improvising here, Dave, the quarterback and the wide receiver. 
They want the slant route to the left side. He doesn't have it. They take it away. So he fades to the right side, and Hicks is running the post route, turns it up, and goes vertical against Juan de Pierre Louis. And you said it, Dave. This is a big time catch with Louis all over, Pierre Louis all over him. Yeah, Juan de Pierre Louis was, I mean, you couldn't have had better coverage. Good catch by Hicks, the sophomore out of Jacksonville. It's a first and goal situation now for the Rebels. And off, off the left side goes Bruce Hall. Not much happening there as Brandon spikes the middle linebacker, the sophomore out of Shelby, North Carolina, steps up to make the hit. Yeah, just didn't get the block on him. It looked like Neely, Reed Neely is the guy that's supposed to get up number 71 up on Spikes, but he does not get a hat on Spikes, and he just flows downhill and makes the play for no game. Spikes leads the team in tackles. Had nine total stops against Tennessee, a career high in the opener, 11 against Western Kentucky in a game that was uh, called with about eight and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter because of lightning and bad weather. Got to figure Mike Wallace somewhere around here. We'll see. Adam stands in the pocket, pump fix, is hit as he throws, batted around incomplete. Boy, Florida just not getting the, some, a, a pass rush, and that's been a concern for Urban Myers. In fact, Seth Adams getting some time back there. Yeah, he really got some time. Dustin Doe got a little bit of late pressure, but you're right, Dave. It was after Seth Adams had a chance to kind of sort it out from a secondary standpoint. Florida did a nice job on Mike Wallace. They wanted to run him in that shallow cross, and they walled him off. Got to try to find a way to get Mike Wallace involved. He split way out, out here at the top. He's the guy they'd like to get the football to. Robert Lane, the tight end, out on the near side. Adams lofts it up. Anybody there? No interception. Tony Joyner caught the football, but he had his back foot on the end line. But what was Adams doing? It looked like the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. He wants Mike Wallace in the back of the end zone. Was not tipped. He just threw it up. Wow. I'm not sure where he was going with that. That was bizarre. Yeah. Just had the foot in the white. Well, Joyner did a nice job of reacting the football because I'm sure he was as surprised as anybody that they threw the ball up in the air like that. 22 yard field goal attempt on the way from Joshua Sheen. His kick is up, and it is good. He's hit from 39, 32, and now 22. Once again, Ole Miss it stalls in the red zone, but they do pick up three points. 21 to 9, Florida out in front. This is a situation where do you get pressure on the quarterback? No, Seth Adams has got time to sort this out. Not sure where he's throwing this football. I think he wanted to get the ball to Mike Wallace. Now, this is Wallace out here. Look at the lane. There's the lane to throw it in right there. But he threw the ball towards the goal post. That was a weird situation. Here's the return. Out to the 38-yard line by Javier Esto Pinon. <laughs> Your 280 pound <laughs> defensive lineman will be the hero of your circle and a stadium of adoring fans. Enter all tells my circle first in 10 sweepstakes by texting the letters FAN to 52191 or by visiting alltellfootball.com. On game day, you could win $100,000 for you and your circle, plus six months of free all tell service for $20,000. Well, the Gators out near the 40 yard line. Their drives have been a lot better when they've been backed up for whatever reason today. Here's Harvin in the backfield. He'll take the handoff. Harvin flagged down. Looks like a hold coming. Ingram grabbing a hold of Jamie Phillips. And everybody in the building saw it. Yeah, again, a counter play, Dave. This is something this team has featured is backside counter play. Cornelius Ingram. A tight end. It's locked on Jamie Phillips. Holding offense number seven. Ten yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Repeat first downs. See a little counter play. And there's your hold right there. There's your hold. 
<laughs> Thanks for circling that because I couldn't see it. <laughs> yeah, if you get a hole, try to make it in a pile somewhere, right? right? Not in the open. And don't be 6'4", 230 pounds oh, where boy. it's you, you don't miss Cornelius Ingram. He is a specimen, too. You, you and a chance I, to be down on the field, Dave. It's, it's awesome oh. to watch him run routes at his size. I don't think there's any question you'll be seeing him playing on another yeah. day during the weekend at some point in his career. The Gators now looking at a first down and 19. 30 yard line. Warren inside handoff. Nowhere to go. Jerry, the junior out of Batesville, Mississippi, with the stop. Murray goes about 310 pounds, but looked like he weighed about 210 on that play. He was quickly in the backfield as we look at our Aaron scoreboard. Not Syracuse up 10 on Louisville in the fourth quarter, and South Florida continuing continuing to churn out some wins. Tight one, an ACC ball up in uh, Virginia, Charlottesville. Georgia Tech up by two. That's been a tough place for the Yellow Jackets to win in Charlottesville. Debo will bring it down and run it out to the 37-yard line. Jerry again with another tackle. Again, designed run for Tim Tebow. This is just a quarterback draw. Simulate pass, and you know when the linemen are released down the field. You see Keaston Moore down the field getting the block. Let's go down to Dave Baker. You know, Arch, Tim Tebow is so good at what he does, but you got to wonder, you know, how many times can you go to the well? I mean, that was his 14th carry. You didn't carry 14 times in your career, did you, at least when it was planned? Come on, Buzz. Well, I mean, hey, well, you're right. It wasn't planned. That's a good call. Yeah. It was not planned. I mean, but how much can he take? No, you're exactly right. The wear and tear on your quarterback through an SEC season, not just in this game, but an SEC season, is going to take its toll. Tebow. This time stands in the pocket and fires, hits Ingram. Breaks two tackles, first down floor to the man we were talking about moments ago. Picks up the first down at the Ole Miss 36, Johnny Brown with the tackle, but uh, that is now 14 missed tackles by the Ole Miss defenders. Well, Dave, this is the old number one, the fastball, because there were two <laughs> defenders closing, and that was about a 95 mile an hour fastball right in the letters, and Ingram turns and makes a play. And I think Tebow liked that. He heated that one up pretty good to get it in there. Tebow now 17 of 27, 209 yards through the air. He's closing in on 100 yards on the ground. He is 10th in the country in total offense. Over the middle, pass caught. Murphy spins. He's at the 10. This will be a Gator touchdown. The fastest player on the Gator team, Lewis Murphy, broke a tackle, and there was no doubt where he was headed. This is a little double job. They play fake, and then they fake the little Tebow quarterback draw, which sucked all the defenders up uh, underneath. And it's just a one-on-one -on -one throw to Lewis Murphy to the outside, and then at some point, defensively, you got to make a tackle. Just a nice job of Murphy spinning out of the two players and getting in the end zone, and then Murphy did the little well, Gator chop down. in the end zone for the, the flag. Number nine of the offense, the 15-yard penalty we enforced on the kickoff. And there's that explanation that you get from coach and with coach and player about, you know what, we don't do that here. Just get in the end zone. Yeah. What is it, act like you've act, been there before? Act like you've been there before. <laughs> and he also gets the old, you're a junior, you should already know that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot going on in that conversation. And the point after is missed. Joey Ehas was 23 out of 23 coming into today, but Misses that one. However, the Gators lead 27 to 9. Tim Tebow with a second touchdown pass of the afternoon. Back after word from your local stations. Well, a mixed extra point by Florida. They would have been perfect on the year, but that mixed extra point came from Jonathan Phillips, the junior out of Wellington, Florida. Urban Meyer not too happy about it. I said Joe Ehas because he had been perfect on point afters all season long. Phillips comes in. There's Ehas, who's also been kicking off. He kicked off last year and did a nice job. And now you got Phillips back out to kick off. So I, I, the question begs, so you wonder if Ehas is hurt. He's been their guy all year, and he has, he's been pretty good. He's made all his field goal attempts. He's been pretty good on kickoff. It's the only thing that makes the example, but uh, here's a big situation now with the, uh, the kickoff being from the 15. Marche Green. 
Breaks containment, gets out to the 40 yard line, and a little push in the back. No flags come in. 19 yard return. Well, Ole Miss came out on the field and, and had to reestablish themselves offensively, and they did that. Got back to running the football. Hall hit it up in there for a nice game. And then it was the, the scramble play. Adams finds Hicks, but the, the drive stalled, and they had to settle for three. Had a chance to get the ball to Wallace on the post for a touchdown. And, and Ogeron Paul plotting this offense for moving the football, but the next step is you got to punch it in. So Ole Miss will line up. Good field position just outside their 40-yard line in the I formation. They'll play fake to Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. Adams rolling out, gets hit. Oh, and a flag comes down. That'll be a blow to the head and the helmet of Seth Adams. He got rocked. Well, <laughs> there's, you talked about the hold on Ingram that was right in front of everybody. This is another one that was pretty easy call. Oh. Personal foul, roughing the passer. 51 of the defense. Helmet to helmet contact. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, that'll uh, yeah, spikes came in for the linebacker spot and just dropped the hammer on the quarterback. And I think Seth Adams, when he sees this film, win or lose, no matter what happens to Ole Miss, he's going to find that, you know what, that back in the flat's not a bad decision. Let me go ahead and get it to him right now as opposed to waiting for that comeback because that throw is right there available right away. And he's not going to take these shots he's taken from some of these linebackers from Florida. Well, that'll be a first down inside the 45. Here's Green. Flag comes down in the backfield. Green down to the 25-yard line. And Dave Maurice Miller got a tackle on Derrick Harvey. This was another one that was really easy to call. Maurice Miller, the big right offensive tackle, 6'3, 343 pounds. Got his arms wrapped around Derrick Harvey. Holding. Offense 79. 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. This season, watch for the Geico College Football's 10 Greatest Wide Receivers, a season long traveling exhibit celebrating the greatest wide receivers of all time. Go to lfsports.com for more information and to find out when Geico will be visiting a college campus near you. You got to kind of wonder in 10 years if you do that same list that Percy Harvin's not involved in that countdown. Look at the penalties on the Florida Gators today. Remember, they're the most penalized team in the league. And Ole Miss came in the least penalized team in the league. They had 13 through three games. They've also been flagged quite a bit. Big tackle right at midfield by Brandon Spikes. That's his fourth tackle of the afternoon. Job of Spikes playing that middle linebacker spot. Just the zone coverage allow the ball completed underneath. Comes over and makes the big hit. Looks the game. Boy, Ole Miss had an opportunity. They had the football in Florida territory and you know, get backed up by their own mistake. Well, here Seth Adams has to take another similar throw, get it back to a manageable situation unless something breaks clean deep. Pump fakes, steps up in the pocket, fires over the middle, passes caught, first down. Shea Hodge with the reception. Florida playing a two deep five under zone Dave and what you want to do to attack this is you attack it with four vertical receivers We're going down the field you see the pump fake to the left side by the quarterback Adams he's trying to pull defenders out of the play which he did he was able to pull the middle backer out of the play and then Shea Adams was able to duck back underneath in front of Dustin Doe Adams now 13 out of 2180 yards 14 out of 22. That'll be Hodge again at the 20. I'll spot it actually inside the 20 down at about the 19 yard line. And Ole Miss moving the ball very well. This is a, a an efficient offense. You look at their numbers this year, so much better than a year ago. I mean, they're averaging uh, over 350 yards of total offense. They've been pretty good on third downs. Over 100 yards on the ground, close to 250 through the air. Now you get in that red zone 20 yard line going in where you really got to finish the deal. Yeah it's been the red zone that has been a concern. There's Hodge pass is caught touchdown Ole Miss.
Well, three consecutive catches for Shea Hodge. He catches the big one down the middle, the slant, and then this, a little skinny post on the backside. Kyle Jackson goes for the interception from the free safety spot, tries to undercut the play, and this is just a hard throw, real quick hard throw, and got the shot to Shea Hodge. Kyle Jackson going for the INT. That's what you got to do. You get down in that scoring zone, you got to make a play. Up and good. Comes with his sixth touchdown pass of the season. Shea Hodge with his first touchdown reception. Hodge today, seven catches, 81 yards. We'll return after this message from the SEC. And the 75th anniversary of the Southeastern Conference. A couple of teams that have uh, been around the league for a long, long time. Going toe to toe. Only the 22nd meeting, though, between these two schools. But Ole Miss has given this Florida team some trouble over the years. They actually lead the series 11 to 9 with one tie. And they have knocked off the Rebels the last two times. They did it here at Oxford in 02. And of course, they went down to Gainesville and won in 03. So nothing new here in terms of Florida having to scrap and fight with this Ole Miss club. It's hard not to look at the numbers and think, uh-oh, when you come into a matchup like this. But Ole Miss has uh, really played well today. Brandon James corralled inside the 35. But it goes back to that they've been able to, Ole Miss has been able to 14, they've had 14 missed tackles. They've been able to overcome things like that. Our Chick-fil-A nugget of the game, you look at the rushing touchdowns. Hard to believe Florida and Kentucky are your top two. You wouldn't think that, but that's the case. Well, I, I think it's a misnomer as to what those two teams are. Everybody sees them making plays, throwing the football, but they're, the basis of what they do is to run the football at you. Tim Tebow for Florida, Rafael Little running the football at Kentucky. First and 10 in an 11 point game. Florida out in front. On two. Pitch to Moore. He's got room close to the first down at the 43. Tripped up by Cassius Vaughn, the sophomore from Memphis. Well, I don't know, Dave. I have to look. At I can't remember. I'm running a straight option, but you get the option here, and here's the pitch. And how about the block by Percy Harvin right there? We talk about Percy making plays down the field, running the ball, carrying the ball. But a nice job of blocking right there by Keiston for Keiston Moore. Easton looks like he got a little banged up. Training staff walking with him. He's got uh, seven carries, 39 yards this afternoon. And now Harvin will stand in at tailback. They'll toss to him. This time the receiver, David Nelson, couldn't get the block on Dustin Muzon. Oh, and Muzon licking his chops. And that will be a loss of five. This is good job by Muzon. One, because he probably studied what Florida likes to do with Harvin lined up at that spot. So he beats Nelson across his face and is able to get in the backfield. But it's an outstanding job of being prepared, knowing that if the receiver's going to block him, he's going to knife in and make the play. Muzon playing at a high level. Muzon had that 99 yard interception return against Memphis, walked into one of his classes the following Monday and got a standing ovation. <laughs> Here's Tebow on the keeper. And he has stood up and dropped at the 45. Got back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe a little bit more. Gain of six. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Injuries really starting to become a problem for Florida, Dave. I was right behind the Florida bench after that last carry. Keiston Moore, he got a stinger. He immediately took his helmet off, and he was really crunching his neck up behind the bench. He's in a lot of pain. And if the Gators get in field goal range again, or if the kicking game becomes an issue, Joey Ehas, we're told, was nursing a pulled groin late in the week. It tightened up on him. And so now Phillips will handle the kicking duties. Thank you, Buzz. That explains that situation. But a big third and six as the crowd uh, making some noise, making third and eight. Kibo chased, still on his feet. Throws. Incomplete. Was that a coverage? Play. No question about it, and it's great discipline by Ole Miss because at any point during in the time, somebody could have run up and tried to make a play on Tebow. It's just a zone coverage, and see, 
You got nine play, nine defenders in coverage. At some point, somebody could come out of coverage to Tebow, and that's what he's hoping for. But nobody does, so nobody frees up, and he has to throw it away. Great job by Ole Miss to stay with the discipline and the coverage. You know, it hasn't looked like Ole Miss has done a whole lot of blitzing today. They've been very sound in their base defensive packages. Good high kick. Jazz Henry that bounces inside the 10 down at the what were they spotted at the four yard line Chris Rainey the true freshman has his hands on the football a 50 yard punt and of course a 50 yard net kick. Let's take a look at our Haviland defensive shield and well last week speaking of a defensive shield this Florida Gator defense held Tennessee to 37 yards rushing on 21 carries that's less than two yards per carry and today they're giving up 3.2 which is uh, compared to what they did last week you're like man what's going on but overall the scheme of things you'll take that every time as a D coordinator yeah coming into today's game they've been run at 46 times the teams are averaging 1.7 yards a yeah, carry. you can't expect that to go no. on all year but you know a three yard per carry average is uh, you take that all year. So Ole Miss now backed up. They'll line up in the eye. Off the left side, Bruce Hall to the 20, to the 22-yard line. Good work up front by the offensive line on that left side, and they've instituted the zone blocking scheme here, and that looked what it looked like it worked there. Another good job, the zone blocking scheme coming off, getting a hat on a hat, and then there's the key block. The block by Cook on the linebacker spikes was able to, and, and we talked about it. We talked about it. the fullback runs the play like he's carrying the football. He ran to the hole. The next guy that showed was the color was was uh, Brandon Spikes. He got him blocked. Tailback right off his rear end for a big game. First and ten. All four carries, 30 yards. Adams throwing up top. Mike Wallace with the catch. He will race to the end zone. Touchdown. Oh. There was no mystery about this play, Dave. This is just a straight fly pattern by Mike Wallace. We've been calling Mike Wallace's name. When are they going to get him the football? This is just straight run past Joe Hayden and an unbelievable throw by Seth Adams right over the shoulder. He did not break stride. And Mike Wallace is the big play guy on this team. Gone for 200 yard games this season. He had four catches for 100. And 39 and two touchdowns last week against Bandy. A big play here. Well, that was just flat out speed on speed. Joe Hayden, Mike Wallace. Both those guys are about as fast as you will find in the SEC as Ole Miss lines up to go for two. Adams out of the shotgun. Passes. Caught. Two point conversion works. Marche Green. And we got ourselves a 27 to 24 football game with seven ticks of the clock left here in the third quarter in Vaughn Hemingway Stadium has come to life. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to spread them out on the two point or on the long throw. This is just straight drop back. And here's Wallace right here working on Joe Hayden. Straight drop back. And I'm going to let it go with some trajectory and let my guy run underneath it. And Mike Wallace just outruns the Gator secondary. Just a straight drop, throw it deep to my best guy. And Dave, I noticed that Major Wright was in at safety. You got two freshmen, Hayden and Wright, and Wright was a little bit slow getting over there and some safety help. He just got outrun on the play. Yeah, just a straight fly pattern, and you don't think uh, the Ole Miss fans are into it now. Well, Mike Wallace out of New Orleans, Louisiana, in his last two games coming into this one. 13 catches, 275 yards. Has four touchdown receptions on the season. Talking to the coaches, this was an area that last year was uh, a lot of things offensively didn't work, but the receiving core was pretty much non-effective. But coaches say most improved area on this team, perhaps. Well, they've shown it. Shea Hodge made the big catch on the post. We saw Mike Wallace there, and Marche Green got the two-point conversion. There's the short line drive kick fielded at the 18 yard line. 
And out to the 35 goes Joe Hayden. And that will do it for the third quarter. I don't think a lot of people expected this to be a three-point game at the end of three quarters. And I'm going to throw you under the bus and say you were one of them. <laughs> I was the other guy. <laughs> We've got fourth quarter football coming up. This is kind of fun. Stay with us. Great. <laughs> Uh, you got to like the energy in the building now. It's, NC, it's SEC football on a Saturday afternoon on Lincoln Financial Sports 27 24. Gators looking at a first and 10 from the 36. Tebow, keeper off the left side. Says, take a little of this. Close to a first down. Tebow has been uh, really, really strong today, but his counterpart on the other side, Dave, with a bad shoulder, practiced a little bit this week, has had a nice afternoon, 15 to 24, and has managed the game quite well. Well, and I think the key there, Dave, as you said, to manage the game, he's decided to take some underneath throws when he probably could have forced it down the field to keep his football in the game. He's not football team in the game. He's not turned the ball over, and that's given that's given Old Miss an opportunity here in the fourth quarter. Tebow over 100 yards on the ground now will hand it off. And more tripped up on the quarter by Cassius Vaughn. But he will pick up the first down. Look at our stats through three quarters and is 105 of those yards on the ground by Tebow. He's thrown for 246. Percy Harvin, 10 catches, 112 yards. He's five off the school record. Well, when you, when you look at that number, though, 112 on 10 catches, that, what's that, 11.2 right, if point. I do the math properly. Right. He, he's three yards under his number. He came in the game with averaging 14.3 yards every time he touched the ball. The MVP of the SEC championship game last year, Percy Harvin. Debo has time, fires over the middle, nearly picked off. Oh, Kendrick Lewis had a, a bead on it, and it went right through his hands. It's a great read by Kendrick Lewis, and it's even a better play because he's, he decided to squeeze the trigger and try to make the play. It's one thing to see it and then say, you know what, I better, I better play back because I don't want this guy to Here he is right here. Now there's verticals coming up the field. He's reading the quarterback's eyes. Now he goes to the football. He doesn't go to the defender. He goes to the football. Outstanding play, Kendrick Lewis. Lewis will probably look at that on tape and uh, be wondering what if. Second down to 10. Tebow hit as he throws over the middle. Pass is caught by Aaron Hernandez, the true freshman tight end who has certainly got stardom written all over his back. But that is uh, shy of the first down by about four yards. Look at that number for Ole Miss. You got to go back to 1977 to see a, uh, a win over a top five team. Now they got a long way to go. This is only a three point game and they still trail. But it is third down and four for Florida. And the crowd's making a lot of noise. Yeah, important point on that last play. Tebow on the ground again, Dave. Marcus Tillman put him on the ground. Remember, young football team for Florida. Hostile environment, first SEC road game. Pass is incomplete. Looking for Percy Harvin. He got locked in on Harvin, but he had Cornelius Ingram underneath for the first down and got locked in on Harvin and didn't take the short throw. That's the first time I've seen Tebow maybe get a little impatient with the decision making. Might have could have got the ball to, to Ingram in the flat for the first down. I told you about how young this team is. 35 of these Gator players have never played in a road game. 18 of them. It's their first road trip ever. Marche Green, look at that left ankle. Boy, it is wrapped hard. Chaz Henry stands at the 40 to punt. They shanked it. Shanked it out of bounds. See where they spot it. That's going to be up around the 30 yard line. Make it the 28 yard line. All right, fourth quarter football. Florida leads by three. SEC football is brought to you in part by Chevrolet. We've got 12.53 to go as you look at the 1959 National Championship trophy. No national championship on the line right now, but 
This old Miss club playing like they've got one instead. They are playing the national champions, however, so there is something there. The segue there. So that's the best I can come up with. <laughs> well, the, the comeback, if you will, in Ole Miss has been by the big play. The receivers and the quarterbacks making plays. That long play led to a field goal, and then the Shea Hodge catch. Jackson goes to the interception, getting the end zone, and then here's the big one that got him back in and got this crowd back into the game. Mike Wallace on the long bomb from Seth Adams. Second down and six. Adams on the run, and he's hit pretty hard. Looks like Brandon Spikes got him. Spikes has already been flagged for a personal foul for helmet to helmet contact, but didn't slow him down on that particular play. Well, he's been hit on this play, Dave, I think three or four times now, and it's because he's holding the ball, waiting to hit the comeback, but he's got a chance to hit the back and the flat. Just get it out quickly. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Arch, Arch, you've been looking at a tired Florida defense, in my opinion, the second half. Greg Madison told us earlier in the week he was concerned, wanted to rotate some guys in there to keep them fresh and keep them from getting pounded. He hadn't done that. They've had to chase the quarterback a lot, and they've been getting run right at it, and they are gassed right now. You know, I think that goes back to Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. He hasn't had many yards on the ground today. Catch made at the 38 yard line. That'll be a first down. Shea Hodge with the reception. Nice design. Shea Hodge is going to sit it down in the hole and now get north and south. Give me the first down. He almost forgot the football. He's able to get back on top of it, and he still had the first down. Nice job of moving the football there. And how about the, the way they've moved the football the last three times they've touched it? You know, back to Ben Jarvis Green Ellis, it's the threat of him. The play action has allowed them to freeze the linebackers for a step, get the little roll out. We talked about him being the heartbeat of this team, and it all comes off of him, dude. This time he will get the carry off the right side. He has met at the line of scrimmage. Brandon Spikes led the way. You know, Buzz talked about how this defense is gassed and been worn down, and you know they're rotating players up front, but still, at some point you got to take into the fact that this offensive line is massive, and if they lean on you enough and bang on you enough, it's going to take some out of you. Here's Ben Jarvis Green Ellis averaging less than four yards a carry out of the eye formation play action going up top looking for Wallace off his fingertips. Boy, caught him in man coverage again and this was a chance for a big play here but he Seth Adams got rushed just a little bit Tony Joyner on the coverage maybe throw the ball just a little bit too long for Mike Wallace. First and 10 line is brought to you by IKBI Incorporated. Igby, building vision, building relationships. You know, Green Ellis came in averaging 4.8 yards per carry. He's under four today. Had a huge game against Missouri earlier this year. Career high 226 yards on the ground. And movement off the right side. Derek Harvey jumped. Robert Huff, the tight end move, but was it because of Harvey? Florida looking over there saying that was because Huff jumped. Prior to the snap, full start, 85 off the five yard penalty, still third down. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Lincoln Financial Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Lincoln Financial Sports is prohibited. Dave Neal, Dave Archer, and Dave Baker bought Hemingway Stadium on a Saturday afternoon on the last day of summer. Tomorrow begins the fall season. What a way to conclude the summer. 27-24. Adams fires. Intercepted at the 38-yard line. Tony Joyner, the senior out of Haines City, Florida. First time Seth Adams has forced the football down the field. He didn't need to take this throw. He's had some success pushing it down the field, and you, you feel like you're bulletproof a little bit. But he forced it down the field, and they were all over the coverage. Tony Joyner, who rooms with Tim Tebow. They call him the odd couple with a big time play in the defensive backfield.
Closed captioning is provided by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Florida with a big in interception by Tony Joyner. We'll have the football just inside their own 40. Tebow with a quarterback keeper. Boy, Ole Miss last year had some hard luck against some uh, ranked opponents. They played well in some games, but could not close the deal. It was a, uh, a struggle for Ole Miss. Much like today, they would put themselves in positions to win some of these games. Look what happened against number nine Georgia here in Oxford. Then uh, against Auburn, they had a chance. 23-17, they lose that. They took LSU to overtime last year. Their only blowout against top 25 team was a game we did over at Arkansas when the Hawks really put it to the Rebels that day. Here's Harvin trying to get a block. Boy, Harvin, it's unbelievable. Guys are like right there to make a play, and they actually get their hands on him, and he just, it's like he's got grease all over him or something. Yeah, he just makes people miss. That's his 11th reception on the game, now closing in on that all-time record. Carlos Alvarez, 15 receptions way back in 1969 against Miami. Harvin just four away from that. Harvin having another outstanding game last week against Tennessee. 13 touches, 195 yards. 11 catches, 121 today. <laughs> Great, Jerry. 98 defense. Tried to tiptoe back to the defensive line. <laughs> and I just don't think at 310 you're going to hide. <laughs> well, and he, he, touched Carl, he touched Carlton Metter on the back. But back in the day, you could do that. Right. You could run all the way in the backfield as long as you got back before it was snap. But unabated, the quarterback has thrown that out the window. So that'll make it first down and five. A lot of options here if you're Dan Mullen, the offensive coordinator for Florida. Especially when you're at the Rebel 45. And it looked like the Gators might have moved on the offensive line. Dead ball, false start. 63 offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. And 13, 13 penalties today against Florida. 13. It's hard enough to, to gain yardage against the defenses in the SEC. They're too good. And if you're going to give up that kind of yardage, I don't care how good offense you are, you're going to have some tough times uh, winning football games. And Look at that, Dave. 122 yards. Yeah, that's, up. that's hard to make up that much yardage. Ole Miss hasn't been much better. Eight penalties for 60 yards. Here's Moore trying to get some of that back. To the 42 yard line brought down by Tony Fine, third tackle for the junior. You know, this linebacking core, Dave, we, you know, we were told by a lot of people that seen Ole Miss play that this is a core that, you know, this isn't uh, Rory Johnson, Patrick Willis, a couple of uh, All American type linebackers. And these guys have been making plays. Yeah, we've seen some missed tackles, and it's getting magnified because people talk about it. Right. You know, there's been a lot of missed tackles on both sides. But this team has stepped up and they've played real. They've been very disciplined in what the game plan was to them. Here's Tebow looking for a hole. There's that linebacking core. Jamie Phillips this time. But watch when, when Tebow gets hit, Dave, especially up high. Look how far he goes after he's hit. Now, there's the hit. And now he's going to go for another three. You know, it just. You can't get the guy to the ground, right? You can't stop him in his tracks. He's so powerful. Well, John Thompson said that they went back and looked at film and said, and you mentioned earlier, you got to hit him low. I mean, you cannot tackle Tim Tebow up high or he'll do that. It's not like the coaches didn't tell these guys. No, and there's a concussion waiting for you down at the bottom if you hit those big tree trunk <laughs> right. legs he's got. And if you go low on a guy like Percy Harvin, he'll slip out of that and go 80 yards on you. That time. They had a low tackle. They miss out, and Tebow picks up the first down. Another missed tackle by the Ole Miss defense, Jamarcus Sanford. That is now 16 missed tackles by Ole Miss. It's incredible when you package the size. This guy's huge in the lower half, great big legs. And he just runs through tackles, and he's just a tough guy. And then he's got the speed on top of that. This guy is not a slow runner. 
It's a guy that can run about a 4 5 40, so he's not, he's not just poking around out there. Jim Tebow, 19 carries, 124 yards. Here's Percy Harvin. Dancing around, slips. Does he stay on his feet? Yes, he does, but he only gets maybe a yard. Ashley Palmer with a nice play. Also, Jamie Phillips helping out. Really well played by Ashley Palmer, the linebacker, because he's really the only, the only line of defense back there on the play. This is just they're gonna show option and they're gonna flip the ball to Harvin. You see the only guy back there is Palmer, and he slows him down enough and allows some more Rebels to get there and make the play. Second down and nine. Comes a blitz. Off the left side. Debo gets to the 20 yard line. Debo, by the way, with his 124, make that 127 yards, new career high for him. He had 93 rushing yards against Troy in week two this year. All right, well, here's the here's the key situation of the game right now for Ole Miss, and for Florida, too. But Ole Miss has got to get a stop here and force Florida to try a field goal. They cannot afford, with just seven minutes left, to allow Florida to punch this in. Big hole for Tebow. He's to the 15, picks up the first down to the 12. Well, you had to know that if the hole opened up in the middle, Tebow's going to take off. This is not a designed run. He's setting up looking to throw, and now he pulls it down. He sees the hole, and, and it's not lost on him the fact that they're going to have a tough time bringing him down when he gets ahead of steam up. Lewis Murphy with an outstanding block down the field. Under seven minutes to go at Ogeron trying to get his club to come up with a big turnover here at least three. This drive taking up four minutes and ten seconds. Here's more. He's met and pushed back by Jamie Phillips a sophomore from right here in Oxford Mississippi. Take a look at Florida's red zone today inside the 20 yard line. Oh, they have been perfect. They have been good all year in scoring touchdowns. Three out of three. And that red zone look powered behind the generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. And you said it, David, it's because of their ability with Tim Tebow to run, throw. They have so many options. Yeah, they spread it out. And really no reason. And they will not go with the back here. You have five wides. And now you have to spread it out. And Tebow's just going to read it. Is there six in the box, five in the box? I mean, they're going to run it or throw it. Debo scrambling to the 10 and can't break the tackle on the far side of Greg Hardy who left the game earlier with an injury and that's part of the athleticism of Hardy. They do a nice job and I'm talking about Ole Miss here of bluffing like they're going to come with more people and then backing out which showed Tebow if he had a check with me at the line of scrimmage you look at Hardy athleticism to go get Tebow show Tebow that hey I got to throw this there's too many people in the box they backed out and he was locked into the pass play then Hardy with the great pursuit makes the play Boy, this is a big play right here they can pick up a first down right about the one yard line Tebow stands tall in the pocket to the corner of the end zone batted away incomplete Dustin moves on Got a hand on the fastball of Tebow. That was a fastball. Almost tore his face mask up. <laughs> it's a great job. The, again, the design of the defense are going to drop nine into coverage. Only rushing two people at Tebow. And he tries to shoot one in the back corner of the end zone. The ball's knocked down by Muzan. Played zone. Took away all the throwing lanes. And it looks as though Joey Ehas is back on for the field goal. From 25 yards out. So Ehas battling an injury, able to split the uprights, but it's still a one possession game with under five minutes to go. Let's go check in with Dave Baker. We'll check with Dave Baker in a moment. Breaking the action back to Oxford after this. Today's game is brought to you by Altel, the official wireless partner of fans. That would be me and you. 
and all of us watching. 30 to 24, Florida leading by six. This has been a classic SEC football game. Just, uh, just another example of a great Saturday in the SEC. A lot of hard hits, a lot of action, and another big hit at the 30-yard line. But Ole Miss will take over at the 33-yard line, a 24-yard return. It has been a hard-hitting day here in Oxford. <laughs> As a quarterback, you you cringe when you see that. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's certain more parts of my body that haven't hurt for years, and all of a sudden hurt hurting again. Well, here's Seth Adams coming off an interception, Dave. Yeah, just get back to doing what you're doing. Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis, or Hall have got to be a part of what you're doing. <laughs> Snap and fraction. 51 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first out. You think uh, Coach uh, Ogeron agrees with that or not? I can't tell. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're. I don't think they're discussing their dinner plans. <laughs> There's Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis, with 11 carries, 37 yards on the sidelines. Well, you mix your backs. You know, Hall's in the game right now. Hall might be a little bit better pass receiver out of the backfield if they want to get the ball to the backs. Quick hitter over the middle. Pass is caught by Lane. Gain of about seven. Brandon Spikes with tackle number seven. A lot of time left in the game. No reason to get out of what you do, your tempo. You actually want to use as much clock as you can move the football obviously you got to put seven on the board but go ahead and use the clock up don't give Florida's offense the football again good catch but not much room to operate Marche Green with the reception This is a quick zone read, throw it to the flat. Good job of flowing and making the play. Florida trying to play zone, trying to play, keep everything in front of them. Again, Mike Wallace is my guy. It would be, if I'm a quarterback, he's a guy I gotta be thinking about here. He's up here at the top. Third and six. Flags again. Good gracious. Wow. We've seen a lot of yellow today. Prior to the snap, snap infraction. 51 offense. Five yard penalty. Hey, what's Still he doing? Out. Is he just moving the ball? And... It must be. He must be moving the football. I, I'm not sure if Seth Adams is using a hard count. Let's look at the center. Let's watch the football. Hard count, and you see he drags it just a count and then snaps it. Obviously, an illegal snap. And I would imagine the quarterback's using a hard count. Now, if I'm Seth Adams, I got to think about if I can get a first down here, I'm not going to be able to use that anymore. I don't know that I've seen that twice in the same game. Here comes pressure. Adams will fire. Crowd wanted pass interference. Dorian Monroe on the coverage. Dustin Doe was bringing the heat. Well, Seth Adams never saw the blitz. He did not. He does not see the blitz. The blitz is going to come off the edge. Here comes Joyner. Here comes Dustin Doe. Here comes Spikes. This is a throw that I think was judged as a caught. It was about five yards short of the receiver, and I think that's why you didn't see a flag on the play. But I, I don't think Seth Adams ever saw the pressure. As a quarterback, you had either adjust your protection or you got to have a side adjustment to throw the football, get your ball, get the ball out quicker. Well, 309 to go, and Ole Miss in a unique punting formation. Timeout, Florida. And Florida calls a timeout to get their defense aligned. We'll step aside as well.
30 to 24 third ranked Florida trying to remain unbeaten with 309 to go in this game in Oxford Mississippi the Rebels getting set to punt it away. An offensive line taking a break right now as the punt team comes out for the Rebels. Boy Florida doesn't want any mishaps here that Brandon James back inside the 30 yard line but a, another unique punting formation coming from Ole Miss. They've got uh, six guys lined up to the right of the deep snapper and they will fake it to Robert Lane has to break a tackle can't get there out over the 40 to the 42 yard line. So with three timeouts left they run the fake they turn it over. What do you think. Well it's, it's an interesting call because Florida called timeout specifically for talking about making it making sure you're on the coverage defense wise for a fake at that point on Ole Miss's side of the ball you got to think OK they they have pretty good feel of us faking his foot faking his kick and we might want to kick it away and use our timeout to try to pin them but a good effort by Lane he almost broke the tackle of Jermaine Cuttingham and uh, Joyner had to come over Joyner cream over and, and got in on the play as well. I just think at that point when you call the timeout at Florida they've taught that's exactly what they talked about was they're going to fake this kick. Now a short field for Florida with three minutes to go Tebow breaks a couple of tackles Tebow close to the 30 yard line that might be good enough for a first down Tim Tebow as we've mentioned career high rushing today. It's another 10 yards. They said don't tackle him up high. Don't tackle him up high. <laughs> Here it is. What do you want? Don't, don't tackle yeah, him up high. Okay. 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 <laughs> tackle him down low. 151 on the ground today. He has shattered his previous high. It's unbelievable. Dave, he's, I mean, you talk about a dual threat quarterback. I, I have been. This is our second time with having uh, the Gators this season, and he has impressed me. He's just so talented. Well, I think it, it, it begins to, and, and this is the way they're going to have to win this football game, is, is, is Ole Miss is going to have to burn a timeout on the conversion by Florida. But this is a situation where you got to kind of wonder, look at Ed Ogeron, and Dave Baker brought it up, how much do you run Tebow and grind him down? Well, the Rebels have won the last two games against the Gators. In 2002, the sixth ranked Gators come to Oxford only to lose 17 14 when Matt Greer picked off a Rex Grossman pass and ran it in for a 24 yard touchdown. And then one year later, Vashawn Pearson ran one yard for the go ahead touchdown, and Eric Oliver preserved the win with an interception of Chris Leak as Ole Miss beat the Gators, who were ranked 24th at the time, 20 to 17. Both games, the Gators were shut out in the second half, but today it looks as though the Gators are going to hang on. They still got to take care of the football, wrap the football up, and that's what Coach Ogeron, Coach Thompson was telling his defense. Now let's tackle the football. Try to rake the ball out. But I've just been thoroughly impressed with Tebow, his ability to. Change his change gears so often from being a passing quarterback to a, a running quarterback to an option quarterback. And he, and at some point, when you looked at this game, Ole Miss came out and did a nice job with taking away the explosion play. What they were going to give away a little bit was the running game, and good job of Florida adjusting offensively to get to the power running game, which I like to feature. And, and Tebow, that offensive line, got to give that offensive line a lot of credit. They've created some room for Tebow to run the ball. Boy, Tebow now has put up some huge numbers. He came in, Tim Tebow, 10th in the NCAA in total offense. He was averaging about 342 yards a game via running the football, throwing the football. That led the Southeastern Conference. Today, Tim has posted 420 all-purpose yards. And, and because of that he is our Lincoln Financial <laughs> Player of the game in recognition of his effort as well as Seth Adams who's had a nice day 300 yards passing Lincoln Financial Group is pleased to provide two thousand dollars to the scholarship fund of the 12 member institutions of the SEC. Hello future. Both those quarterbacks played at a high level Seth Adams played extremely well today gave his team a chance to win the football game. Here's Tebow off the right side. 
And Dave, I think I, you know you, you hate to do you hate to do this sophomore quarterback, but with what he's doing, throwing the ball from an energy standpoint, charisma for his team, and then running the football. I mean, he's got to become part of the Heisman hype. He's got to become part of the mix. Yeah, I was reading. Got to talk things. about him. And he wasn't in some some things. I was reading. He wasn't in people's top five. He has got to be one of the top five college football players in the country, especially what he's doing. His versatility, uh, his how strong he is, the, everything he brings to right. the dance. You know, and I know he's a sophomore and he's only started four games, but you got to start talking about him. Here's Tebow off the right side. Once again, gets tackled up high. And what does he do? Picks up a first down. And gets up in the air and encourages the Gator fans in that end zone. Say, hey, what? Well, guess what? I just nailed this one shut for us. <laughs> he really did. He put this team on his shoulders in the second half. He did, running the football and then and then his decisions to throw the ball underneath. And that's that's a maturity level that that uh, is a lot, a lot of times lost on a quarterback that didn't have the playing time that he has. He was able to distribute the ball underneath, move the chains, and then the running game allowed him to wear down this Ole Miss defense. And I'll say this, Urban Meyer, and he, this was not, I, I flat out asked him, I said, is this coach speak when we talked about traveling to Oxford with a young football team and how concerned he was? And folks, he said, no, I am dead serious and I am worried about this trip. And you can kind of see why as flags come down. I think he he will he would have taken a one point win. He'll take six, obviously, uh, but he wants to get out of here. This was a, one Start of the players the is. Dave Baker off. said uh, early in our game, one, one of his young players walked up to him after practice or this week and said, Coach, so what's the deal? Do we leave day of the game? What, how, how do we? How does this work? Well, he's got what 35 players that it uh, never played in a road game. Yeah, never played on a road game. 18 in their first road trip ever, and you see their schedule, of course. Be a they got Auburn next week, and then a, 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 it, it, LSU on October 6th. That is, there are big games in this league every weekend, but for some reason, that one, folks, is we're all eyeing. Well, you know what? LSU's got one coming up here in, in just a short few minutes against South Carolina that, that is a big one as well, and, and that'll go a long way to determine what that Florida LSU game is all about. But, uh, I, you know, let's go to Coach Ogeron. Let's talk about what yeah. his team, his team came in here. A lot of people talked about them being undermanned, linebacker course banged up. We don't have a lot of our people, but uh, we saw that score real quick right. shot of the score it was nothing, nothing there in Tiger Town. But uh, this defense and what they've been able to come, come in here and do against maybe the best offense in the nation. I mean, I don't think it's too strong to say that when they came in doing what they were doing with the numbers they were racking right. up. 45 seconds to play in this one. Uh, tip my cap. I know it's a tough loss. Ole Miss fans, players, coaches all want to win, but there weren't many people that gave Ole Miss much of a shot in this game. And they came out here and played their tails off. They really did. When you look at your state, the coaches like to say, when you look yourself in the mirror the next morning, did you leave everything out on the right. field? And they did. They played it to the wall, and they played the th third best team in the country to the end. Urban Meyer knows that he'll take his club back home. Get out of here. Because <laughs> yeah. this was not an easy ball game. They had to fight for every point, and they win it by six to go to four and zero oh, and two and zero oh in SEC play. This Ole Miss club will go down swinging, but they go down. They fall to one and three and zero oh and two in SEC play. Back with more after this. Together, and they have done a nice job today trying to slow down that man's offense. Dan Mullen, the offensive coordinator. Of the Florida Gators. A little throwback to Harvin. Nice grab. He's at the 10. The 5. Touchdown. Oh, my. Can this guy play the game of football? Electrifying. Something we hadn't seen yet, Dave, was a little misdirection. Showed a little run play one way. Came back with the screen back the other way. Something I don't think. This is another, another wrinkle that Dan Mullins pulled out that I don't think they've seen on film. Ole Miss caught by surprise. And Harvin, if you get him in the open field, there is nobody more dangerous. And that is something the coaches told us for the Rebels, that they cannot afford those today. They've got to play near perfect football. Debo, a little keeper, dancing around to the five, down to the three. Touchdown, Florida. Boy, how strong is this kid? 
does an outstanding job with a little sidestep in the hole. Gonna come right to you. Watch his little sidestep right there. He found the hole. And that's Sanford coming up, and he just runs right through Jamarcus Sanford's tackle. He talked to Ed Orgeron and his staff. They talked about how you tackle. Five yards today. Keep it again, left side. Inside the five, touchdown, Tim Tebow and the Florida Gators. Well, they you got five receivers in the pattern, so as a defense, you've got to make sure that you have enough people deployed to defend that, as well as get some rush. They do a nice job, they make it look like pass. Tebow's gonna show pass, it's run all the way. See the lineman get the block, and then your receivers have to block down the field. He is 10th in the country in total offense. Over the middle, pass caught, Murphy spins. He's at the 10, this will be a Gator touchdown. The fastest player on the Gator team, Lewis Murphy, broke a tackle and there was no doubt where he was headed. This is a little double job, they play fake and then they fake the little Tebow quarterback draw which sucked all the defenders up uh, underneath. And it's just a one-on-one -on -one throw to Lewis Murphy to the outside. Yeah, it's been the red zone that has been a concern. There's Hodge, pass is caught, touchdown Ole Miss! Well, three consecutive catches for Shea Hodge. He catches the big one down the middle, the slant, and then this, a little skinny post on the backside. Kyle Jackson goes for the interception from the free safety spot, tries to undercut the play, and this is just a hard throw.